family and you'll be gone. You'll be gone. But you brutalize us. You arrest us. You treat us as a sworn enemy. Meanwhile, we are not after you. It's a sworn you. You pray. And you are like a terrorist. God will judge you. God will judge you. You will ask her to God. You see people die every day. You will ask her to God. When you take your parents to Kolebu and they can't get dialysis, you will ask her to God. God will judge you. God will judge you. And set your own on the back. And set your fucking on the back. God will judge you. You will leave in the proud condition. Your pay is not enough. You cannot afford education. The scholarship is not for you. Your children are at home because of it. You cannot afford it. I swear, God will judge you. God will judge you. God will judge you for being used as a tool. God will judge you. Judge you. Each and every one of you that treats us as the enemy. God will judge you. God will judge you. And if the country is there, you will suffer the most. Police, you suffer the most. You die every single day. You die every single day. You rob me. What you get from it? You will die poor. This country, the way it is, you will die poor. Your boss will be loose. You will be sorry. You will be sorry. You will be sorry. They pay you money. And you think you are all right. this morning. You think you are all right. This one is every time. Nobody. Wait till you can afford 400 cities diabetes. You think you are supposed to be done. Wait till you are. But no money. And you died. He died! 24 year old! He died! Not because of sickness! Not because of sickness! Do! Do! I swear! God will judge you! What you did on Thursday! God! My lady! My lady! Calm down! Calm down! Wait! Calm down! Calm down! My lady! Calm down! 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 I want to hear a story! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! What, what's your name? Nasiba. Nasiba. I can see. Calm down. Calm down. You calm down first. Let's go. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down, baby. Calm down. You're very angry. I'm what's very angry. What's your story? I am very angry. I'm more angry at this morning. People are dying each day. The dialysis machine in Kolebu got smoked. Do you know the number of people who died? A 24-year-old boy died this morning. His father is a teacher. His father is a teacher. Gave over 30 years of his life to the service. Could not afford transplants. Could not afford dialysis. 400 cities a week. What do you mean? Do you know how much taxes they check out every day? The cost of living. But you bring in flowers for your daughter's birthday. You bring a cake to celebrate 11. God will judge the government. God, God will judge Akufado. It will hurt him. It will be excruciating. It will be in pain. Somebody who built his career on protest. He built his career on protest. God will judge him. God will judge him. He will miss his death. He will miss his death. Making people suffer. Look at the Ghanaian youth. Look at every one of them. Using the police as a tool. Others arrested on Thursday. Treated. Beaten. And lied about it. Lied about it. Peters lied about it. Said they didn't beat anybody. What is wrong with protest? This country's independence was founded on protest. It was founded on protest. But I guess he doesn't know that because he thinks government owes him. Ghana owes him something. His birthright. You worked so hard to become the worst president ever. God will judge him. God will judge him. United Airlines, Delta Airlines, you Home Sweet Home in the Ghana, and the better place for me to live. And then, and you are telling me, and I talk for yourself, don't talk for the police. Eh, eh, police, the majority of them, no matter, a single one, a single one, a single one, a single one.
for material no go for them. Uncle Pop they give two million. Oh, they go come bobo. They say no mutual desert boot is say. I say black. Black in your mum. They are quiet in their pain. A year ago, in our media, you hear Juma. Say Juma, what people are mad? We are mad. 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 We are Allow the traffic to grow. Allow the traffic so that your fellow police will be comfortable to get to their destination. That is an appeal. Thank you very much. This is from the police administration. We are here to engage you as fellow Ghanaians. We are engaging you because you have blocked the road which is not allowing your other colleagues to also use the road. They also have the right to use the road. So we want to appeal to you as human beings, as people don't, who don't want people to suffer. Your colleagues are suffering. They cannot go. So they are stranded. You can do your demonstration. You have every right to do your demonstration. But what we are appealing to you is to please allow the traffic to grow. Allow the traffic so that your fellow colleagues will be comfortable to get to their destination. That is an appeal. Thank you very much. This is from the police administration. Let me tell you, since I was 18 years old, I have had three careers, right? I have had a swimming school. I've been teaching as a swimming instructor for seven years, okay? Yeah. And then I've been working as a social media influencer on, on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, you name it. Yeah. And in addition to that, I've been practicing for law. I've been studying for the law to eventually make money in that area. And finally, I've been basically working on my YouTube career as well. How many sources of income did I mention? Four. And I take the trotro every day because I can't afford anything. Are you saying Uber, please? Let's be serious. I literally... I saw a tweet that says the politicians probably like their belly full. I do 010 or 001. Do you know what that means? No eating breakfast, no eating lunch. You just eat supper. Okay. I'm not even ants to my chest. I say this on my YouTube. I'm very honest. I don't lie. I struggle to even take the troll troll sometimes. I'm telling you facts that happen to me. Someone who has three sources, four sources of income. How? Unless the government is not working. I used to have a car. I used to drive. My brothers and sisters, I used to drive. Right now, for me to be able to afford that car, I just parked there. My dad sold it off. I can't afford this lifestyle. And I'm talking about taking draw I'm not talking about Ubering or driving. I'm talking about taking the draw -trail. At times, I have to make sure that it, the money I'm holding is enough so I don't get embarrassed. What is it? No, because it's different if you say, like, oh, I just have one source of income. Or maybe I'm not even working. Yeah. I wo I've been working for seven years. Give me a break. I should have something to my name that shows that, yes, I've been working in this country. Like he's a human rights advocate. I, 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 asked, I asked that question um, earlier. Uh, mm. Someone brought up that argument. I was yeah. asking them what they make of the president's claim of his record as a human rights defender. I'll decline to answer that. Trust me. You don't know. You what, plead. You, know you plead a fifth. I am pleading the fifth heavily. And let me tell you. Let me tell you one of the reasons why we are here. The fact that I am pleading the fifth. The fact that I have been silenced so that if I'm to say anything, then it could be antagonizing the government the fact that as a citizen of Ghana I can't answer a question about my president that is the reason why we are here we're not timorous souls I will, at least some of us look at us here we're not timorous souls so we'll fight to the end you have to change something something has to change because we're not going anywhere maybe it was the oldies look at us we're young people we have energy and we'll come for you no because why is it that at the amount of money that was found in our madame's house and what did they do they thanked her for her service and was justice they use all sort of blasphemous 
law code during Only 
Who will be there about? Yami. If you call her, I want. Who will be there about? Now you can see there is a barricade right in front of the hospital and they want to way right to the 37. They want to get their way past this barricade. And that is what is going on here. They are doubling that barricade and the police have set a barricade without giving their way to pass. Now they have diverted in two ways. The other way and this one. And if you can see what is happening there, the protesters are right in front of the police where the barricade is. They have still been prevented from moving. And that is what is going on. They have placards. They said the police should give them way right to the Jubilee House. It is hashtag occupy the Jubilee House protest. And this is the final day of the protest. <laughs>
I've been here, been a tea, I would just have one will be.
Betuum, and the Anna Omusra, Omayaka, a binsum, our party room, as he said, Omu to me, I had their shoes. And you won't quite a party in your mother, but the man of us will give them a shoulder, no doubt about it. Shoulder, who give them a shoulder? Yeah, you know, yet I was shanty region, forty seven MPs, Omunia, Obia, Edin, Washenu, one position, vice chair, a vice president. They are promising Ashanti region MPC in Mumbai 7. And they are pushing everybody. God, they want Vice President. Vice President Bakuni Pass 17 and April. Ah, and Unti Amamoni Fila said, You know, sir, Jato FBN and Moon was a man in Zebu. You know, you lose. How can my Vice President beat Bahama? And you're possible. When in Sembe Briba Wakai. Na enna breed ni amunku ambenyenti chinchina yangu opposition I resist me ni yangu opposition. Thank you very much, honourable. Macho, yes, honourable. The dinamiti epo macho. So in case I am not to this car, I bet I don't know. You know, sir, as I before, I am not a wizard for to do the Allah the Nabi. Kutuba Allah the Nabi, Kutuba Kuchara, Kutuba Kule, Kubwa Kubwa, Honorable Kennedy, Ajapo, Ah Musoni, Baumia, Muru Kamusoneno, Muru Kamusoneno, Al Anche Al Muslim, Al Muslim, Ni wodi chamso, Me Bara Me Kuni, Am Aku Fana, Me Bara Master Yuma Di Fred Yuma, E Pia Mpule Le Kubeni Na Ano, Honorable Kennedy Ni Yesu Hena Ni. What is the difference between the ordinary thief and a political thief? Number one, the ordinary thief steals your money, your bag, your watch, and your jewelry, isn't it? But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief will choose whom to rob but you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you because we choose them we vote them we blindly say we are not blind who is deceiving who the ridiculous part of the whole issue is that we will fight to defend and protect our belongings from the ordinary thief is it not but we fight each other to defend and protect the political thief is that not what we do Thoughts will be fighting themselves to protect those that are stealing our career, stealing our job, stealing our health, stealing our success. What a shame. If you reach a certain stage in life and there is nobody who can look you in the eye and tell you the truth, you are doomed. And that is where our country has gotten to. We need to rescue this country. We are lying. And I feel very terrible as a Ghanaian at this time. This country is in serious trouble, ladies and gentlemen. We are in serious trouble. We need to rescue this country, ladies and gentlemen. The presidency has been so depraved, so, so muddied, so dirty, that I tell you in all sincerity as a Ghanaian, that I feel terribly sad today as a Ghanaian. We need to rescue this country. Wallah. Insha Allah. Please don't cry. We shall rescue our country. Government is broke. Government is broke. The people are spending billions to go inside the government that is broke. Have you ever seen a minister who resigned because government is broke before? Government has no money. Have you ever seen a governor who said, hey, ladies and gentlemen, when I was elected, I thought the government had money. Now I discover government has no money, I resign. Have you ever seen it? Government has no money, but they are bringing money out at election time. Where is that money coming from? So they are lying. What is happening is that there are two types of wicked people in government. Type one, they eat current money. Any money they find in government, they will eat it. They are wicked about that one. There is type two. Type two, they eat current money and future money. They will say, ah, oh, um, my term will end next year. When I leave, how will I eat money? Let me borrow money now. and borrow money of the future and eat it now. Right, hello, good morning, and welcome to the show. This is Good Morning Ghana live on Metro TV. So, Wednesday, the 27th day of September 2023, by his grace, we're live and we're here 
we yet another edition of the show. Gratitude to go to Most High God for the rare privilege of being alive and of course the opportunity of having another conversation around the top stories making around here in our dear Republic. I'll let you into our panel for the morning's conversation shortly. But let's take a look at the front pages of our newspapers. Daily graphic. God plans to reduce bitumen imports. Alan's resignation premeditated MPP. Teacher unions want SHS calendar reset. And there's a special supplement on, the hospital, on hospitality and tourism in today's edition of the Daily Graphic. And talking about hospitality and tourism, I've said this many times and I repeat it today because of the special supplement. There are almost 17 taxes, levies and fees as far as the hospitality and tourism sector is concerned. And so anytime you raise issues about uh, cost of hotel rooms and cost of all those things, just remember that there are as many as about 17 taxes and levies um, as far as this particular sector is concerned. Ghanaian Times, collapse Dolly Bridge, commuters forced to pay more, travel time on Accra Wa Road increases to 20 hours, prices of goods and services shoot up. Ghana to become first African country to issue FLEGT license. NPP not hijacked. Party denies Alan's claims. 1,433 died. 10,367 injured in road crashes this year. Daily Guide. NPP slams Alan. Party not hijacked. General Secretary. Kandapas used Bakavoma or 10 million cities. Atu forcing dodges police over Bank of Ghana demo. Untmi bans Alan's posters. The New Crusading Guide. Alan's loan sum presidential bid. NPP urges party folks to close ranks and forge ahead. Purported one million US dollars bribery claim. Bakavoma dragged to court. Mahama sympathizes with flood victims. Condemns government's inaction. Ongoing limited voter registration exercise. Don't allow underage children to be registered. Bamiya cautions parents. Gold purchase program helped stabilize the economy. Bank of Ghana. Ofriata Lord's giant step towards achieving climate prosperity. The insight. Is this the end of French neocolonialism in Africa? Say goodbye to breaking eight. Professor Kobe Mensah to NPP. Amakuba, he says NPP is corrupt and will soon collapse. Gan South Assembly accused of giving permits to illegal land developers to build houses in waterways. Ghana ranked 12 in world production of coconut and number one in Africa. The informer, allegation of $1 million US dollars by Bakavoma was suffers credibility crisis, turns to OSP for salvation, but minister says Lila is using for $10 million. Beta Alan commits suicide and rates on tribute. Failed 1977 history repeating itself. Alan's Unigov dead at birth. Building a prosperous continent. Bold leaderships needed. Akufuado charges African heads. Arresting moral decadence. At Mills Institute backs GPCC. The Inquisitor. There's fire on the mountain. Police officers storm OSP with issues bordering on procurement. Peace Council worry over Ghana's drop on global peace index. Feature, competent, versatile Dr. Prempe and international assignments do. Mischief gone bad. List of scholarship beneficiaries circulating on social media old. The Herald. Chiramatin clears air on Kufo's involvement in his resignation. People don't know me. My political capital had nothing to do with Kufu. NPA moves to protect local fuel transporters. Warns Chinese company with 600 tankers. Cozy Healthcare Initiative touches over 3,117 lives in Adentan. Energy Ministry shields Kufu's family's complicity in oil deals. Car power getting secret payments again. Other IPPs ignored. The Daily Statesman. Let's keep our focus. NPP rallies members around the elephant. Kandapa slaps Bakavoma with 10 million Ghana cities defamation suit. Over 3.9 million Ghana cities eligible bonds tendered from DDEP. Baumia cautions against registration of minors to vote. The Ghanaian publisher uphold principles that define us. NPP tells members. Kandapa sues Bakavoma for defamation. Cozy's health initiative touches more lives in Adentan. Abno said distances herself from Alan. Punch. A Memphis Central NDC parliamentary candidate donates 70,000 cities to refurbish Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's mother's residence. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah built industries without slogans. Deputy Minority Leader. Ghana needs new leader, Alan Cash. Next NDC government to scrap founders, apostrophe, day celebration. 
STU to host ARCTUG 2024, fight against unemployment. Coca calls for attitude not change among the youth. The custodian. Kandapa sues Bakavoma, 10 million cities for defamation of alleged $1 million bribe. Alan Chiamantin's accusations are false, MPP. Baumia is parents to advise underage children against registering as voters. Alan Chiamantin's resignation is an overkill, Elmina residents. Construct the bridge now or we construct it ourselves, chiefs and people of VIA. The finder, NPP debunks Alan's claims, General Secretary rallies rank and file behind party. Dr. Baumia is experienced to advise underage children against registering as voters. Kandapa sues Bakavoma, 10 million cities for defamation. Alan Chiamatin's resignation is an overkill, Elmina residence. Traffic control measures on the Tamao motorway begins October 2. Daily Post. Our party is corrupt to the core. It will die soon, leading MPP member. Ekufuadu has been a disaster at Kennedy. NPP collapsed long time ago, Alan. People who laughed at my Muslim mortuaries proposal are now commissioning them. Mahama Jabs Baumia. And that's about it. For the front pages, we'll be back shortly. You are your own person, unique, one of a kind, special. That's why you deserve everything tailored to suit your particular taste, your preference, your needs. Just like MTN Just For You. You can get customized offers tailored to who you are. Dial star 141 hash or use the My MTN app to get to choose from a variety of offers made just for you. Betway is your gateway to a theme park full of gaming excitement. A whirlpool of wonder where your favorite games come to life. Where you can take to the skies with max payouts that reach into the millions. All in the palm of your hand. Visit betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply. Betway is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. No under 18. Bet responsibly. Betway. Bet your way. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. But as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. With portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200-535-515 lifts and elevators the elevator people ready for something refreshing and great tasting for your kids enjoyment Angel Cola. for your graduation enjoyment Angel Cola. beach hangout Angel Cola. For all your refreshing moments. Angel Cola! For your parties, get togethers, events, and celebrations, enjoy a chilled bottle of Angel Cola. Radio Grandma, today is your day. Over to you. Thank you. Enjoyment Cola. Angel Cola. The Enjoyment Cola. Enjoy all your moments and fun time with Angel Cola. This advert is FDA approved. In life, choice is good, but choice plus safety is way better. Your safety and comfort is paramount. Under the cylinder recirculation model, you can buy LPG in a safe environment. All cylinders are inspected 
and maintained to the best safety standards so your safety is assured. Just take your empty cylinder to the nearest exchange point and swap it for a filled cylinder. Different cylinder sizes will be available to meet your pocket size. Imagine cooking in a smoke-free environment. This will improve the health and well-being of you and your family. Choose LPG in a safer model of distribution. Cylinder Recirculation Model Securing your safety, creating more jobs. A message from the National Petroleum Authority under the patronage of the Ministry of Energy. Ready for something refreshing and great tasting? For your kids' enjoyment? Angel Cola! For your graduation enjoyment? Angel Cola! Beach Hangout? Angel Cola! For all your refreshing moments? Angel Cola! For your parties, get-togethers, events and celebrations, enjoy a chilled bottle of Angel Cola. Radio Grandma, today is your day. Over to you. Thank you. Enjoyment Cola. Angel Cola. The Enjoyment Cola. Enjoy all your moments and fun time with Angel Cola. This advert is FDA approved. Good afternoon, Mr. Ampedu. Good afternoon, Mr. Sarah. How is business doing? My business is collapsing. Why is your business collapsing? I sold my products and services to my clients on credit and my debtors are not paying their debts. Have you heard of Rusik Consult Limited, a debt recovery company operating in all the 16 regions of Ghana? Not at all. Mr. Ampadu, all you need to do is to contact them on their customer service line. They do all that. I recommend Rusik Consult Limited, a debt recovery company to financial institutions, businessmen and businesswomen, other companies, and also individuals. Rusik Consult has 98.4% debt recovery rate. We have professional debt recovery managers. You are assured of swift debt recovery. No recovery no commission for Rossi Consult Limited, no more write offs, and we pre finance the recovery ourselves. My son, there's more blessing in giving than receiving. Who knew fear for you now and couple the makers in Sran Mundero? The pneumatological abrasion of the Lord revealed unto me this night that me and my household should go out into the world and bless the world. Makers Electronics Company Limited am up to 67% discount. I was selected appliances as well. And did you do this year? This is what I call quintessential immaculability. Jamu! She said the Makers Electronics Company Limited. I will tie for Burkina Highway. I'm a Samaizongo Junction. I'm the care for my Sidani. Oh, yeah, I'm a Fatherman. Boga Junction. A shaman, Valko Flat, Kumasi, Ahinema Koko Bain, Asafu Wachi Hospital Junction. Sakwadi, Afia Kuma, Number 9 Market. Go and tell mom and dad about the maker's blessing attack for us. From 0552-222-253 and 0552-222-254. Terms and conditions apply. The same in Gato Moon, I'm a CC. Masanya Oh, sorry. We bring your phone. No one direct star two two six. Ash, you are through there. You see the power up now. Mobile money, Visa card, Master card, a BH Vitia. Eh, you know we see BH. You see the power up. We want to show a down sum. Nee simple pa. Inside Black Star Press Limited, grow inside the invective minds. Evolving concepts and the creative trends. The printing press you need now. Witness the beauty, diversity, and natural wonder with our works. Inside Black Star Press Limited, in association with Lionhead Group of Companies. Call us now on 0200-880-000 for all your print works. Black Star Press Limited, a worldwide reputation for quality printing. 
Your bola style. Don't be like that. Zoom Lion is here for everyone. Pay with star 857 hash and we will come for your bola. Zoom Lion. Tiamme and for bola wati. Welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. With me on the show this morning, Esther, Director of Legal Affairs of the NDC, Godwin Eduji Tamaksu. Good morning, Eduji. Good morning, Randy. Good and good morning to okay. the Honorable Collins Adomako. All right. So he's, he's back. He's been dealing with the IMF and the World Bank. Uh, <laughs> but he's back uh, um, at his domestic World Bank uh, where he's having a, a lot of issues. Uh, uh, he's uh, suffering um, an electoral DDEP uh, in his constituency. He's a member of parliament for the Fiji Kwabre North constituency, the Honorable Collins Adomako Mesa. Good morning, Collins. Good morning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have not congratulated my brother. Yes, thank you. On this uh, elevation. The big position. Big position. <laughs> Direct out <laughs> legal affairs. <laughs> no, no. Randy, Randy is <laughs> happy to me. And, and president I of FT. <laughs> All be, all be lies. The president of the FTC. Yes. All be lies. President, in fact, I, I forgot that. President of the FTC and the director of legal, legal affairs. Propaganda. I mean, I, I mean the, the combination of the portfolios. It's, 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 it's marvelous. It's okay. You know, it's okay, once, you, once the FTC sinks you, the legal directorate <laughs> saves, rescues you. <laughs> what a combination. <laughs> Right. Anyway, so MTN says I should tell you that it's the Momo season. It's the Momo season. It's the Momo season. And they're rewarding you for what you do anyway. And there is something for everyone. Just download the Momo app on Play Store or the App Store and use Momo Pay for your day-to-day -day transactions to a merchant either through the QR code or merchant ID and stand a chance of winning 1,000 CDs and other amazing prizes weekly. Our merchants are also not left out of the reward. Receive payments and win. Keep using your Momo Pay on the Momo app and get rewarded. There are lots and lots of exciting prizes for everyone. So what are we doing today? Transact more with Momo Pay and more points and win big this Momo season. Visit momomerchantsapplication.mtn.com.gh for your Momo for Business account today. It's Momo season, so just Momo it with Momo Pay. Terms and conditions apply. And if you're thinking of securing your future as far as um, higher education is concerned, do so with Accra Business School. Boost your career with the prestigious MNC degrees from KNUST. Pick from Human Resource Management, Communication, International Marketing, International Relations, Public Affairs, or IT Management. In just 12 months, the MBA can be yours. Dive into the BSc programs in IT Security and Cybercrime, IT Management and Business Management endorsed by top universities in Ireland and Wales. The Accra Business School offers flexible entry payment and learning options convenient to you. It's time to unlock your potential and take position. Visit www.abs.edu.gh or call the Accra Business School on 0263-888-345 or 0263-888-366. Or you can visit the campus on the Spintex Road, Christ Square. Let Accra Business School elevate your future today. And enjoying the fruits of your labor is as important as enjoying the mansions of your labor. 
uh, nice line enjoying the fruits of your labor is as important as enjoying the mansions of your labor the pains of climbing the stairs when not exercising could be challenging for all ages but worry no more lift and elevators have got you covered with the best portable american pneumatic vacuum elevators on the market today it's a simple self-supported elevator for both homes and offices and guess what it can lift goods too Wheelchairs can fit in and they come in three custom made models. It's affordable and can be installed within three days. Visit Lift and Elevators at Sakumono or just call them on 0200535515 or email um, them at elevatorsgh at gmail.com for consultations on the best solutions in easy vertical movement. And the Ghana Energy Awards is here again. This is the seventh edition. And this year's theme is Ghana's energy transition framework. Sector institutions as building blocks for the 2030 to 2040 target. Now, this is the best part. You can nominate yourself, someone, or even an institution for these categories. And the categories are Visionary Leadership Award, CEO of the Year, Energy Investment Impact Award, Energy Institution of the Year, the Energy Signature Award, Energy Company of the Year, Energy Think Tank of the Year, Rising Star. Energy Report of the Year, many more. Visit www.ghanaenergyawards.com for more information. Or you can reach them on 055-930-0631 for sponsorship. The Ghana Energy Awards is endorsed by the World Energy Council and the Ministry of Energy. It is validated by Mazas Ghana and the Ghana Energy Awards, seven years of redefining excellence. And... Um, Having problems um, getting the kids to appreciating um, the need to brush their teeth uh, or loving the brushing of their teeth, well, it becomes difficult uh, due to the resistance because of the taste of the toothpaste. So I've got news for you. Use Kel Kids Toothpaste flavored with strawberry. That gives a perfect taste for kids and makes them develop a personal attitude and love for brushing their teeth always. Kale Kids Toothpaste protects child's gum, prevents cavity, and makes the teeth strong and healthy with freshness all day. Kale Kids Toothpaste is recommended for children between the ages of 2 and 6. It is a product from Samara Company Limited, producers of Sasu, and is approved by the Food and Drugs Authority, FDA. <coughs> Kale Kids, happy smile. Okay, so, well, if you have to pay money through your nose, you don't smile that often. And that's what's been happening to at least one of my panelists uh, uh, this morning. <laughs> Honorable, <laughs> I hear that uh, after visiting your constituency for a few days, you are broke. <laughs> All right, good morning to you. Good yes, to yes. You. It's, been, it's been almost a month. Yes. And, um, Money to my very good friend. Mm. <clears throat> Randy, I, I, I returned to the country and then immediately traveled to the constituency mm. uh, because the registration was about to start. Mm. And uh, you know, the EC had decided to use the district offices as the only centers mm. in each constituency for the registration. Mm. Randy, I have 24 to 25 towns. 25 towns. Towns. Within my constituency. Mm. Now, my constituency starts from Danase, and I'm sure you are quite familiar with the geography. Yes. All the way through Painting, Pampetia, and Quantakese, Akom, to Ahinkro, uh, to Parmain, before you get to Amuakon, right. before you get to Boma, which is the district capital. Mm -hmm. From there, you move on to Abroma, Soko, all the way to Chichuere. Whoa. Now, from Chichuere to Boma in the center, even now that the, the roads are fairly okay, it takes roughly 30 to 40, 40 minutes to get to the center. And Chichuere is the main town. In there, there are other villages mm. within those towns. Mm. Now, the question then was, how do we bring the people from a 30 minutes drive mm. to the center to mm. register? Mm. Obviously, the party then had to sit to strategize on how to get the people from those areas to the center. Mm -hmm. So there was a meeting. And obviously, 
the owners then lies on the, the member of parliament of course. to assist financially mm. to convey all those people from those areas mm. to the end. And my point, Randy, is that why do we have to spend so much money just to get people to register? Mm. If the EC, after all the discussion that has gone on, and I, I recall that even at IPAC, all the, mem all the political parties at IPAC mm. disagreed with this particular process. Mm. So even if you've decided that, that, that in spite of all the discussion that have gone on, the EC as an independent body thinks that this is how it wants to go, mm. why not increase the machines mm -hmm. uh, at each center? But when I go to the center, in my constituency, there are three machines. Two at any point in time is working, and one is on standby. And if you recall, the first three days, every day, almost two to three hours, the machine goes off, freezes. So for two hours, the machine is not working, and the people who have been brought there are just seated, doing nothing, just waiting for the machine to come up. And Randy... You bring people from a 40 minutes drive. They come there. This is after you've bashed them there. Mm. They come there for two hours. There's nothing happening. These are 18 year olds, young people who have just come from the hinterlands. You have to find something, water for them to drink, mm. get some pastries for them to mm. eat. Randy, when we sat down to do the calculation, I had to cough up 30,000 mm -hmm. just for the first two to three weeks. Days. Days. Mm. And don't forget that the normal Ghanaian attitude, the first week or two, we were registering just about 59 people, 80 people. Then I realized when I was going to two weeks, the mm -hmm. second week, mm -hmm. it started increasing mm -hmm. to 150, 200. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that this being the last week, mm -hmm. just yesterday, the information I got was that our numbers have increased. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that the people you are conveying to the center mm -hmm. will increase. Mm -hmm. If you are using just a pickup, the frequency of the pickup going to one particular area to convey people then increases, increasing of fuel mm. and all that. So my point is... Even the risk. Even the risk. Mm. So my point is, why do we have to spend so much money in getting this thing done? Mm. Why can't we speak to ourselves and get to a certain consensus? My point is that EC seems to be, um, as in, I don't know the kind of word I should use, but they seem that this is what they want to do. They say you don't have to worry. If you can't register next year, they will provide you the opportunity. So don't worry. How are they going to register next year? Is it the same process or they're going to increase the number of uh, centers? They say they are going to do, um, how do you call it, continuous registration. So the same center, one center? I don't know. Because the continuous registration, as I know, normally it's just the district office. The district office. Mm -hmm. So people still have to come all the way to mm -hmm. the center to register. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the EC should, uh, should be a little bit flexible. Mm. I am saying that, Randy, if you cannot increase the number of machines... We are saying they should be flexible. It's like they're doing you a favor. But, but Randy, right now, the point is that yes. we've, everybody's talking about it. Yes. All the political parties are talking about yes. it. And are complaining about even the expenditure yes. that we are incurring in getting people to register. Mm. This is what they still want to do. Mm. Fine. I'm saying that, why don't you even increase the number of days? Mm -hmm. If it's 21 days, give us another 9 days to make it 30 days. Mm. To accommodate all the people who, are, who have turned 18 and who legally have the right to register and vote. Now, I listened to the EC also about the sanctity of the register. Mm -hmm. When I got to the center, mm -hmm. I also realized that a lot more people, fortunately for my area, the National uh, the Ghana Card Office mm -hmm. is in the same building. Mm -hmm. So a lot more people are able to get their Ghana cards mm -hmm. and also quickly go to register. But the point is that I've also seen the guarantor system also ongoing mm -hmm. based on the old LI that we are using. Randy. So there are quite a number of people in your place, place who have done get the guarantor. The guarantor system. Okay. Yes. So if somebody comes from Chichwe, it's a 40 minutes drive, mm -hmm. and comes to the center, it is difficult for my agent at the center to challenge yeah. the person. Because yeah. of course, he doesn't live in Chichwe or Tichim, mm -hmm. which is a 30, 45 minutes drive. So these are some people, uh, this is a Trafran place. So they have to go through the water, the, the lake or river. To, you know, to get registered. To, to go and, yes, because, because of where they live. So to get to the district capital, this is what they go through to be able to go and register. This is a front place. A front place. Yeah. 
So, right, my point is that you either increase the number of days or you increase the number of machines so that at any point in time, if four or five people or ten people can register at any point in time, within the 21 days, you may be able to achieve the target. The last time when I checked, I'm not sure they've been able to meet their target. And if you uh, just oppose what has happened so far, the number of people so far, and you extrapolate to the number of days left, I'm not too sure the EC will be able to meet its target. Well, the EC says that next year there will be continuous registration. I'm just hoping. I don't know how that process is going But is, is that not a responsible talk? Uh, because you see, let's take it this way. The, the um, registration as a voter is my constitutional right. The constitution has created an institution to facilitate that right, to ensure that right for me. I turned 18. After the registration exercise, the last one in 2020, I turned 18 after that. In 2021, the Electoral Commission does not register anybody in this country. So I'm denied that. There are elections in my area. It could be a by-election. I'm unable to participate, although it is my right. 2022, the Electoral Commission does not register me or make it, give me the opportunity to be registered. There are elections or there's an election. I'm unable to, although it is my constitutional right. 2023, this is how they decide to do it. And when I complain, they say, don't worry. If you cannot do it this year, next year we'll give you the opportunity. Is the Electoral Commission doing me a favor? <laughs> Yes, is the electoral commission must that be the narrative from a constitutional body that is supposed to work to ensure the enjoyment of my rights as a citizen of this republic? So, Randy, uh, maybe Edu will help me. If I go to go and beg you, if I come to you to beg you for something, to plead with you for something, that's when you can have that kind of attitude. But if I make a demand of you for something which is mine, you cannot adopt the same attitude. And my worry is that we, most of us are carrying on as if the Electoral Commission is doing somebody a favor by making registration accessible and making it easier for people to register. That's what I can't, I can't understand. It's as if uh, people are behaving as if the EC is doing anybody a favor. It's like the, it's, 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 a, it's a privilege. It's, it's a favor. They have to be begged to, to do it for, 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 for us. Where is that kind of thinking and narrative from? Mm -hmm. the, that's what I was asking if the 2021, there was no announcement of a limited registration. But is it, was it okay for people to just walk into the Electoral Commission's office to register from 2021, the continuous registration? They didn't make provision for that. Oh, okay, so, so, so it means that the whole of 2021, people could not just walk into the no, office no, to just register? No, oh, okay. no right. person was I, registered I, I, in I, 2021. I, I, no I, person was registered in 2022. So the third year is this one. Okay, so I thought that uh, the 2021, 2022, people had the right to just walk into the EC's office to register. No. I was thinking that this particular one is because of the... The district assembly election, mm -hmm. that was why they are having this kind I of I am sure that, but for the district assembly elections, we would have gone 2023 without it as well. Because it's pretty obvious that the EC was waiting for the CI, which mm -hmm. appears mm -hmm. to be in limbo. In limbo in yes. Parliament. But they obviously also see the repercussions of having the election without, without having it. registered anybody for three mm -hmm. continuous years. Mm -hmm. Randy, so I, as I said, I will, I will just, we will just continue to appeal to the EC. For me, I think that it's not too late. They could increase the number of days. Uh, they could have an announcement and say, we're giving another five, six days, uh, by, or nine days, to make it uh, 30 days, mm. to allow those people or all other people who could not register within these 21 days an opportunity uh, to also register. Mm. But of course, Randy, if you ask any member of parliament, uh, I'll be surprised if anybody tells you that this has been 
a small a small task on us. In fact, your colleague, uh, the Honorable Suhini, yeah. who is even in a Periaban constituency, he's even actually sent me the details, you know, of what it takes to do this. Then looking at an average of like 80 persons, and they're spending an average of about 2,500 cities a day, yeah. even with about 80 persons, mm. you know, to be able to get this registry daily. Yeah. I mean, if you can ask every member of parliament. It's, 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 it's quite expensive. It's quite expensive. I know. Eddie. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so, Randy, uh, we are having to deal with an electoral commission chairperson who believes that she is not adequately protected by the constitution and that her security of tenor is well protected having the MPP continuously been in power. This thinking of the Electoral Commission emanates from the fact that, for the first time, we saw Mr. Akufado doing the unthinkable, the removal of Charlotte Osei. And that singular act of Mr. Akufuado in removing Charlotte Osei had given a blueprint that even persons who enjoy security of tenor, it is not enough. And that a president without restraint can do the unthinkable. And so, from the first you know, from the very first beginning, that Madame Jane Mensah was appointed by Mr. Akufuado as the chairperson of the Electoral Commission. Everything that she has done one way or the other to undermine the electoral laws of this country. And she had been very consistent in that enterprise. First of all, in the year 2020, the very voter register that elected Mr. Akufuado, MPP MPs, for some bizarre reasons, they decided to change it. Even when political parties insisted that a critical document like your birth certificate, which on the face of it discloses who your father, mother is, where you are born, and that by reason of Article 42, that birth certificate provides a proper document in demonstrating that you are a citizen of this country. Because by the laws of this country, if you have a grandparent, by 1957, you qualify to be a Ghanaian. And so you notice that even our courts, Justice Redu, by 1963, in the deportation matter involving the son of the Togolese president, Olympio, had ruled that by reason of the fact that Olympio son, the mom is a Ghanaian, he was a Ghanaian. Even though the father was a president, former president in Togo. That is the kind of progressive thinking that the framers of the constitution had. What do we have today? We saw our courts, for some interesting reasons, say that the birth certificate cannot help you to prove that you are a citizen of this country. All of those conducts have emboldened Madame Jane Mensah to believe that she is the queen of queens. She is the lord of laws. And she is above the laws of this country. And that is why everything that she had done from the time she became the chairperson of the Electoral Commission is to undermine the laws of this country. Randy, Regulation 30 of CI 91, as amended by CI 126, provide in clear terms that she is supposed to revise the register of voters annually. But because Madame J. Mensah thinks that she's above the laws of this country, the last time she compiled the register was 2020, correct? Yes. By law, she was supposed to revise it in 2021. She decided not to do it. She's the Lord of Laws. 
2022, she decided not to do it. By parity of reasoning, you would notice that every year someone is turning 18, correct? And so, you would already know that having, you know, the fact that you didn't do it in 2021, 2022, there will be a backlog. No, automatically there will be a backlog. So that is what should even inform you as a duty bearer to expand the number of registration centers, to take care of these numbers and the backlog. This is common sense. This is logical. But Madame J. Mensa will not want to have any of this. Randy, can you imagine that the ongoing registration exercise now, she has decided to engage only one network, MTN, for the purposes of providing the network service. And so you go to many of the registration centers and they'll tell you there's no network. And so for two hours, they'll not be writing letters sending text messages either to boss manasari or the original directors that permit us to do offline then an instruction will now come and say go ahead and do it offline but in this country we know that there are places that you may not have mtn but you have say etel or vodafone so anybody who is minded to do good will have multiple streams of networks so that if MTN is not working, you can easily switch it to the, the, the other one. She won't have any of those. The political parties met her, in fact, met Bosman Asari. And Bosman actually agreed that the concerns raised by these political parties are so legitimate. The next time Jemensa was out there announcing that she would do it in the district offices. Randy, what is the historical numbers? At least that should inform your later actions. In the year 2016, the Electoral Commission chaired by Madame Charlotte Hosse decided to undertake a similar exercise by way of the limited or continuous registration. Can you imagine that within 10 days, within 10 days, registration down in 6,000 electoral areas generated in excess of 1 million registered voters in 10 days. In fact, the 10 days was not enough to the point that Madame Jane Mensah had to do a press conference then as IEA boss telling the Electoral Commission chaired by Madame Jane, uh, uh, Charlotte Jose, to even give additional days. This was Charlotte, uh, uh, Jane Mensah. And the evidence is there. Today she is running away. I have been monitoring the exercise in Volta region. This video, I went to, uh, 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 what do we call it, Angloga, and I wanted to see, I think the video is even on the, on the screen. Mm -hmm. You will notice the number of persons in the queue in Angloga. Randy. And if you look at the way Angloga is, the small, small islands and others, picking all of them to one location. Randy, it's not a joke. Madam Jemensa has field officers who should be reporting to her the challenges that Ghanaians are going through. Why is she burdening Ghanaians? And today, you see, I am happy that at least my good friend Collins has experienced the intransigence, the unreasonableness of this woman Jemensa. You see, Maybe she was thinking that she was about to maybe do the NDC in. But the evidence on the ground will show that it is costing people time, energy, and everything. I spoke to the chairman for, my chairman for Hope Way. It is costing the party almost 3,000 Ghana cities every day. Where are we going to get this kind of money? When you can easily do it in a electoral area, I mean, you go to a place like Hopewe, you are moving people from Fodome, right to Hopewe, from Liati, the Blee areas, almost the border with Togo, and you bring them to Hopewe town. Look at a place like Ketu, Ketu South. This is one of the largest constituencies in the whole country. 
the registration is happening in a place called Toko or something. And you are moving people from Nogopo, Abozome, Kliko, all to this place. Randy, it doesn't make sense. Everybody, I've heard the my hand of God. So, telling Madame Jemens and that, listen, Madam, don't destroy the peace of this country. Randy, you know that any time people congregate at one place, it is also a hotbed for violence. Because there's always the likelihood that disagreement can generate, degenerate into anything. And because we are dealing with a political party, it opens up the conversation to anything and anything can happen. All reasonable appeals to this woman had fallen on death here. And Randy, you see, that underscores the concerns, the legitimate concerns raised by the NDC. When Mr. Akufuado decided to bring Dr. Apiahini onto the Electoral Commission, because if Madame Jane Mensah, who is not quote unquote until her appointment, the director of ID, uh, uh, IEA, can demonstrate this level of hostility, unreasonableness, can you imagine what Apiahini, an openly known MPP propagandist, will be doing? And when that happened, you saw the regrettable response from the Council of State. In fact, somebody, uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> there is a name, I'll, I'll hold it for. And you expect that elderly people like this who are on the Council of State will have this nation at heart. But it does appear that everybody, old, young, are just doing everything to please Mr. Akufado. And these things do not augur well for the democracy that we are building. Randy, can you imagine? And, and, and I want to salute the NDC MPs, the Speaker of Parliament, and possibly the majority in Parliament. Randy, from the time Madame J. Mensa became the EC chairperson, one of the things that she has started doing is to begin to reduce the document that you can use to prove identity. In 2020, you could use your passport, guarantor system, Ghana card, for this purpose. From nowhere, she decided to bring a new CI to parliament. And by that CI, only Ghana card will be used. Any forward planner, a person with foresight, will know that the use of Ghana card alone was going to be problematic. What has been the outcome of this registration exercise undertaken by her? The evidence is so overwhelming. And that evidence alone should be enough reminder to Madame Jane Mensah that she has been one of a terrible chairperson of the Electoral Commission. Do you know that as we speak, we have done in excess of 560,000 persons who have registered so far nationwide. Of this, 63% are using the guarantee system. Randy, 63% are using the guarantee system. A system that Madame Jane Manson wanted to abolish. But for the intervention of speaker, the minority, and the MPP MPs. In Parliament. But for speakers' insistence that the pre laying should go before the committee of the whole, and for the first time, deliberations at the committee of the whole have to be televised for Ghanaians to see. Even that, she is still attacking Parliament for stopping her with this reckless decision. Randy, can you imagine if Madame Jane Manson has succeeded with the connivance? with the MPP MPs, who at that point didn't see the wisdom in the undertaking by the, the minority and had allowed the constitutional instrument. In fact, they had even indicated that the instrument had been laid, but for the swift intervention of the then whip, uh, 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 the Honorable Kwame Agboja, a uh, minority leader, Atufose, who indicated that at the business committee, 
The laying of the instrument was not part of the deliberation for the day. This instrument would have gone through the 21 days as stipulated under Article 11.7. And the danger this would have caused for the, the ongoing exercise would be huge. If, honorable, even with the guarantee system, the challenge you are going through, imagine all these registrants have to use Ghana card. The danger that would have <clears throat> caused us. So, Randy, if you look at all the issues that have happened so far, it doesn't require a so, 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 so the, the, the director of elections and IT mm. of uh, your party, uh, Dr. Mani Bwama, um, has um, uh, brought a certain perspective to this discussion. And he's, um, he's uh, drawing some parallels between Ashanti and Great Accra. Mm. And he says that, um, and he's trying to uh, point out a flaw in the EC's uh, um, strategy, the decision to uh, deploy two machines per constituency. Mm -hmm. okay. And he says that uh, Ashanti region, one of his home regions, has 47 constituencies. Okay, he is Ashanti and Eastern, right? Yes. Okay. So he has 47 constituencies. Greater Accra has 34. So if you do two registration kits per constituency on the average, it means Ashanti has 94, Greater Accra has 68. Look at that. But Greater Accra has a larger population size than Ashanti. Okay. So why would you give Greater Accra, for example, less kits than Ashanti? So the point he's making is and, and, and you just see using doing the thing like per constituency and therefore district. And, 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 you see, and you see, Randy, there's even a greater notion of gerrymandering. Because you see, elections have said that it is garbage in, garbage out. If you don't get the people on the road, it doesn't matter. So the one that gets the people on the road gets to get the votes at the end of the day. And so, the Electoral Commission, just by deliberately deploying electoral kits, the registration kits, can ensure on even registration without doing anything. So you will see the conduct as seemingly lawful, but it is geared towards suppressing votes in the stronghold of a party that, in this particular case, the Electoral Commission may not be in favor. Mm -hmm. And so if you work carefully, so, so, so just to illustrate the point you made there, sure. so, sorry, just so that our, our viewers can follow. Now, this is data from the Electoral Commission itself. This is even late. Yes, this is as at day 14, Good. after two weeks. So after two weeks, this is from the EC itself, where there are three identification um, 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 uh, methods for this particular registration. So we have the guarantor system, the Ghana card, and the passport. So the passport is actually giving you zero point four. Yes, zero point four one. Four one. Okay, and then you have the Ghana card. Um, that is six point seven six. Yes, and then the Ghana system is sixty two point three. Okay, now this is actually the the nine. This is the fourteen. This is the. There's a more yes. new one. This is the fourteen. As yes, at the, the end of the second week. Yes. Yes. You are at zero point three two for passport. Thirty six point six nine for Ghana card. And for the guarantor system, almost 63%. So 0.99, you approximate yes. 63%. So 63%. Yes. Use the guarantor system. Yes. And this 63 is what she wants. And Randy, this is what Madame Jemensa is determined to abolish. And this is data from And she system. needs the connivance of the MPP majority. Because you see, by law, if you look at the way our constitution is structured, the allies, the CIs, requires two thirds to be annulled. So immediately the instrument is laid. You have to wait for 21. 21 days gestation period. Once that 21 gestation period is done, it's doomed, it becomes law. Two, unlike an ordinary bill that parliament through deliberation can amend, with constitutional instruments, CIs, allies, Parliament cannot even amend the instrument once it is laid. In fact, in the words of my Lord Justice Broby, the only thing you can do is back to sender. That's the only thing that you can do. Revert the instrument back to where it is coming from. Randy, do you know something curious? 
If you do the research, and, and a research that I've done on how the Electoral Commission previously have been coming out with their instrument, they set up a committee, usually chaired by a deputy chairperson of the Electoral Commission. And the responsibility of that committee is to deliberate on even the drafting of the instrument. So in this case, under um, um, Afarijan, Madam Charlotte, uh, Charlotte Ose, there was a committee. MPP usually brings Mr. Obiama, Honorable Obiama. He was always the rep of the MPP on the drafting committee. The NDC had my own respected uh, uh, senior, Hudu Yaya, on that committee. CPP usually, the smaller parties usually brings Kabila, Kwabna Bonfe those days, to represent them. And they will sit down with a state attorney and go through the instruments, take views from all the political parties. So if you look at CR 91, you see how robust CR 91 is. Because of the greater engagement from all the political parties. In 2022, when she decided to amend, by way of amendment, CI-91 with CI-126 and 127, she basically sat alone and drafted the instrument. No political party involvement. And so, consistently, Randy, if you see the kinds of things Madam Jane Mensah is doing at the Electoral Commission, it's like a one-man show. Can you imagine? That the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana, through the Special Budget Committee, voted in excess of 56 million Ghana cities for her for this limited registration exercise. Because when she went to Parliament, she told Parliament that, in fact, she presented what is known as the medium term framework for 2023 to 2026. And in that document, she herself told Parliament that. Overall, she would need like 360 uh, 60 million Ghana cities for her activities for 2023. Can you imagine that when she appeared before the Special Budget Committee of Parliament, the amount she requested for the purposes of this limited registration exercise for 2020, Parliament didn't even say, no, we'll reduce the amount or something. We said, okay, if you need 56, we'll give it to you. Is this the work of 56 million? <clears throat> she says that the 56 was on the basis of the continuous registration. No, but you have not done continuous registration for 2021, 2022. This is the only time you are doing. And the budget was specific for 2023. Mm -hmm. Is she going to undertake any other exercise in 2023 relative to registration? Because already she even asked Parliament to give her 200 million for the, the district assembly election that is upcoming. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So already all the matters have already been put in proper perspective. All she needed to do is to utilize this 56 million to bring more Ghanaians onto the road. I have seen the parties. My Deputy General Secretary, Mustafa Gbandi, has already started a call that will need an extension of the time. Because the number of people who are still in the queue, she's supposed to be ending this exercise on the 2nd of October. And the and people then, in the and then the transfers will the transfer replacement, replacement transfer replacement and all of those things will kick in. Will kick in. And Randy already when is the assembly election? Nineteenth December. December. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. So already she had already planned that she's doing it. And when she was asked, she said, Oh, I am doing it in the district offices because I'm doing this for the purposes of the district assembly election. Which law mandates you to do that? Madam J. Mesa should appreciate that. But that's She's why I said that, but for that election, we would have gone 2023 without a registration In fact, from again. what she said, yeah. and, and where the law itself says that, do it. And Madam J. Mesa must appreciate that, even if she has discretion, that discretion must be used in accordance with law. And the law is clear. Do it annually. You say, I won't do it. Expand it. And, and if you look at Regulation 2, Randy, you notice that Regulation 2 is couched in mandatory terms. It says that even in designating a place as a registration center, factor two things, mm. suitability and accessibility. Look at your constituents. 26 towns. And sometimes when you say 26 towns, these are not villages. Yes. 
These are not villages, so Randy. I mean, Agozome is not a village. Kliko is not a village. And so if you are asking a whole town, persons who have 10, 18, 19, 20, to move from Agozome to a place, that sometimes it takes you almost an hour, 30 minutes, to go there. Look, there is this uh, uh, constraints in whole West. The district capital is in Jolopeta. Mm-hmm. But you mean to move from Abutia. Yeah. Look yeah. at where Abutia is. Yeah. So called they pass through whole town mm-hmm. and get to where you have to go and register. Mm-hmm. Look at that Gotti McPetoy. And those other places. I always use this classic example in Quanta South. You are moving from Brewaniansi to Inquanta itself. And you know the painful thing? One of the NDC MPs, Betty Crosby. Betty, yes. Betty, a front place. place. North. The district capital is in Donkoku. Mm-hmm. But the constituency stretches as far as the Dija Islands. Is, is Donkoku where the ferry is? Yes. Okay. It moves right to Donkoku, Mami Krobo, mm-hmm. and all she, those she areas. She says Bandri was even the quote. In fact, yes, she says yeah. Bandri with Volta mm-hmm. region. In Praiso. The Toko. That side. Mm-hmm. In fact, her boundary is actually the Volta Lake. Oh, okay. Yeah. And all the islands within it. Mm. And Randy, this MP wrote a letter to the Electoral Commission appealing that, okay, granted that you even want to do it this way. For every rule, there can be exception. So you take my constituency as an exception to what you want to do. Deploy this kit strategically to those islands. Even if it requires that I have to pay, I'll do it. Jim Benson responded to her that her people on the island should wait to 2024. Officially, I have never seen a woman who is so bizarre in her thinking than this Electoral Commission chairperson. I mean, why do you do this? This is a legitimate reason to say that, okay, I will treat this as an exceptional case. I will give you extra kits that you can take to the islands, the Mame Krobo, the Dija Islands, among other things. She wrote almost an insulting response to the MP. Does Madame Jemesa not recognize that even to get her budget approved, she requires the, the intervention of MPs? And these are legitimate concerns. We are not making these stories up. What is it that will make the stories up? And even the political parties were even asking that instead of 6,000 electoral areas, you do it in 1,500. They even made a concession. Like, like, like she did in 2019. Exactly. You do it in 1,500. In 2019, Randy, led by my senior doctor, Irene, we represented a client, Ayuba, who hails from Daboya Mankaragu constituency. And when we did the analysis, we realized that a place like Bombo, which is in uh, Daboya Mankaragu constituency, they have to move to Daboya, the district capital, and it is 97 kilometers. So when we went to court, we brought an application for injunction. Again, the case was expedited. Mm. She filed her affidavit in opposition and came to court and said, okay, um, she had heard things, and so she will expand the numbers. And expanded the numbers. Because she was going to do 268. Yes. Yeah. And she has, so she expanded the numbers. And look at the registration in 2019. Randy, I mean, you know well, what? This time around, um, the, the courts could not offer that opportunity. No, so we, I mean, the court gave us 17th October, two yeah. weeks after the exercise. I'm just time. saying that this time around, the courts two could weeks not, they could after not, the, uh, the matter as a result ended. of the legal. So you see, so colleagues, you see, when we see some of this, and I have made this point clearly. It's on vacation himself. <laughs> in, 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 in 20, 20, uh, 2012, the Electoral Commission, if you recall, decided yeah. to create the 45 new constituencies. Yes. There's this gentleman called Ranford France. Yes. Ranford France went to the Supreme Court. It was in September, just as we are in now. Led by my own uh, uh, senior and company law lecturer, a man I respect greatly, Joe Gatti, as his lawyer, they went to the Supreme Court. Do you know what the CJ did then? She quickly put a panel together 
presided over by Justice uh, uh, Julius Ansa, within two days, my Lord Justice Ansa had determined the application for injunction. By 4th October, the substantive matter had been fixed for hearing. Mm. So, you see, some of the concerns that we raise, we have this feeling that even state agencies have been weaponized against us. Deliberate weaponization of state independent constitutional bodies against us. And when these things happen, it gives us a feeling that the scale is not balanced, it's not fair. I don't have a problem. Give me a panel, let the panel decide that your application is dismissed. I think I'll be heard. Hmm. But where it is clear. That the exercise is supposed to end on 2nd October. <laughs> you give me a date, 17th October. Mm. It is two things. You are either making more clear of me or the work you are doing. Mm. And, and, and uh, you see, these things do not allow for the building of greater public confidence. So, Honorable Sal has sent me a text. I don't understand it. Honorable Sal. <laughs> it says, Akpafu Toji. To yes. mean pass them to her where to lick the mate. Why? Can you imagine? <laughs> and you know that place. You know from <laughs> that's where that Yes, I know. Yes. Yes. From Hope, <laughs> you do the central coffee, you go uh, look at the distance between the towns. Mm. Yeah. Look at where Lipe is. Yeah. Look at where Lolobi is. Yeah. And you are asking them to move to Mate. Where the district and these are towns like a uh, Lipe Mate is the district capital. Yes. For Whoa. some. That's why he So Akpafu Toji. Right to, to me pass him to Mate to Hohoe to Mate, to Mate. yes, that's where the district wow. capital is. Wow, 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 and you are asking people to trek. And look, I've heard and read on Ghana Web a statement attributed to the Shrad boss mm. in such times of moral crisis. Lone voices like that of the Shrad boss provides a certain comfort. And this is a man who has slammed the chairperson of the Electoral Commission. That what she is doing, it is not good for this democracy that we are building. What at all that Madame Jemensen see herself to be? Randy, what at all? The chairperson of the Electoral Commission. Beyond that, she's a, a mother, a wife, a human being. So, 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 is that not the more reason? Is that not the more reason? In fact, a senior lawyer. I, I'm even thinking of being a mother. That's even when imbibe naturally with the issues of fellow feeling. That you can appreciate how persons, and and consistently you see that Madame Jane Mensah had been working to build an elite register. Why? Because you see, when you say Ghana card, and and he will tell you. Most of the district offices, the Ghana Card Issuance Center is not far from the Voter Registration Center. If you go to Angloga, Keta, and the rest, they are just doing the Ghana Card. And if you look at the queues, even at the Ghana Card Center by the 18 year old, huge. So already so on, the, on the issue of about 63% yeah. using the. So uh, Andy from Drobo in the Bono region has an interesting perspective on this. Okay. He says that. Um, uh, the analysis that you put on the screen, I can tell you for a fact that the Ghana system has registered a lot because the minors who the political parties are registering are not using Ghana card. If you get on the grounds, you could see the political party executives are registering these minors and guaranteeing for them. All those who are using either Ghana card or passports are the matured ones. So the political parties themselves are the problem. Not to suggest the constituency level registration is the best way. No, you see, this is one of, uh, uh, with the greatest respect, mm -hmm. one of the excuses that people are giving Madame Charlotte, uh, Madame Jane Mensah. Mm -hmm. Regrettable. See, at the registration center, it is not possible for MPP and DC to conspire to register a minor. It won't happen. Me, knowing that my brother Collins had brought a minor. And we live in the same constituency. And you see, when you do the registration, Randy, on the issue of minors, when you do the registration at the police station or electoral area, it helps better to identify a minor. Because you know yourself. Because the child lives with us. Mm. At best, we can see her baptismal certificate mm. or birth set. Or oh, you know it. So 
when you do it in the electoral area, it provides even a better mechanism for identifying the minor. So the person who sends these things doesn't appreciate the issues. Well, look, I remember the. No, he's just saying that. No, I agree. But you see, this is what, uh, one of the things that Madam did. Because she uses the word sanctity. Mm. You think myself and colleagues will agree to allow a, a foreigner to get onto our role? Mm. It won't happen. Mm. The same way we will not allow a minor. And when you do it, like I pointed out, in the electoral areas, it allows a better filtering system. Because then we can call the assemblyman in the area. Ah, Mami in Ebai, ah, see a Hana, ye word. Dabe no di 18 years. Do be eyewitnesses. Uh, Rani, you, you'll be surprised that this particular exercise, yes. the prospective aspirants yes. to the electoral of the Sudan yes. Assembly, yes. yes, they are interested. They are so much vigilant. Uh, they are simply men, and they know process. their child, they are very safe. Because <laughs> they, I mean, they are going yeah. to be the beneficiaries of yeah. the in the, in the yeah. But uh, I think my brother and myself. Yeah, just before you go on the, <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the analysis that uh, Dr. Manibama provided. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Honorable Sunimi is also added to it. He says that um, uh, it says two kits are deployed to districts, two per district. Meanwhile, some districts like Sanarugu, Tamale North, and Sanarugu and Tamale Metro, Tamale South and Central have two constituencies in the in the district, the one district. Yet uh, they were also allocated to registration kits, like all districts, with just one constituency. You know how? Huh? So then he says that. For example, where there are four constituencies in uh, Greater Kumasi, they have eight kits for registration. Four constituencies in Greater Tamale will have four kits. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yes, as, as I said, the, my brother and myself, uh, on the operational difficulties, I think we are speaking the same language. Mm. Just that some of the words. Okay, all right, you know something. Let's, let's just take a break and we'll okay. return. We'll wrap up on this one. But. Um, 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 Abraham Ferguson has a text that I'll, I'll just go. He said, hosting two solid FT merchants, there's no way they will disagree. We'll be back shortly. Good afternoon, Mr. Sasan. How is business doing? My business is collapsing. Why is your business collapsing? I sold my products and services to my clients on credit, and my debtors are not paying their debt. Have you heard of Rosic Consult Limited, a debt recovery company operating in all the 16 regions of Ghana? Not at all. Mr. Ampadu, all you need to do is to contact them on their customer service line. <laughs> they do that. <laughs> I recommend Rossi Consult Limited, a debt recovery company to financial institutions, businessmen and businesswomen, other companies, and also individuals. Rossi Consult has 98.4% debt recovery rate. We have professional debt recovery managers. You are assured of swift debt recovery. No recovery, no commission. For Rossi Consult Limited, no more write-offs. And we pre-finance the recovery ourselves. Hello my friends, my name is Kelkate's Toothpaste. Wow. I was made to be gentle on your gum but protected. I will protect your teeth from cavity, make your teeth whiter, stronger, keep your mouth fresh all day. And best of all, I'm strawberry flavored. So put on a smile and try me. That's amazing. Just try me. That's my job. If you say so, jump on my brush. Make your teeth stronger. Chicky chicky whiter. Chicky chicky stronger. Yay! You did it! I'm glad you like your new toothpaste. Don't forget to brush both day and night. Girl kids, happy smile. Ready for something refreshing and great tasting for your kids' enjoyment? Angel Cola! For your graduation enjoyment? Angel Cola! Beach Hangout? Angel Cola! For all 
your refreshing moments. Angel Cola! For your parties, get togethers, events, and celebrations, enjoy a chilled bottle of Angel Cola. Radio Grandma, today is your day. Over to you. Thank you. Enjoyment Cola. Angel Cola. The Enjoyment Cola. Enjoy all your moments and fun times with Angel Cola. This advert is FDA approved. ECG is now cashless. My studio lights are always on. I never run out of power. With the ECG Power app, I'm able to report an issue, check my credit, buy power, all in real time, whenever I need to. I don't worry if ECG vendors are closed. In the comfort of wherever I may be, I still keep my lights on thanks to the ECG Power app. You can simply use mobile money wallets, Visa or MasterCard. It does not attract e-levy. With the ECG Power app, you are totally covered. To download, go to the App Store or the Google Play Store. You don't have a smartphone? Don't worry. No internet? Don't worry. No data? Do not worry. Just dial star 226 hash. This is what I call convenience in your hands. ECG Power App. A yes, simple power. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. But as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. With portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200-535-515 lifts and elevators the elevator people step into success with a car business school boost your career with a prestigious msc degrees from knusd pick from human resource management communication and international relations public affairs in just 12 months our mba can be yours dive into our bsc programs in it security and cybercrime it management and business and management endorsed by top universities in ireland and wales we offer flexible entry payment and learning options it's time to unlock your potential and take flight. Visit www.abs.edu.gh or dial 0263-888-555. Let Accra Business School elevate your future today. To help meet your business and private printing needs successfully, we have just the right products and services. At Appointed Time Printing Limited, we specialize in digital printing, offset printing, packaging and security printing. Our innovative designs and complete professional touch on our print printing is the solution. Betway is your gateway to a theme park full of gaming excitement. A whirlpool of wonder where your favorite games come to life. Where you can take to the skies with max payouts that reach into the millions. All in the palm of your hand. Visit betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply. Betway is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. No under 18. Bet responsibly. Betway. Bet your way. My name is John and this is my long time crash. My cookie dipped in strawberry yogurt. On this scorching hot afternoon on our way back from a long job hunt, we met this good Samaritan who offered us a six weeks later. Yes, 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 yes. What the reception for a bride and groom. And there she is, my cookie, dipped in someone else's yogurt. Who holds the mula? Holds the shot. Play game by games. The easiest lottery. 
play and, and win big four numbers from <laughs> zero to nine up to three times daily to become one of our daily lucky winners. Dial star nine four six hash to play now, or you can also play online at www.gameparkgames.com. Game Park is regulated by the National Lottery Authority. Inside Black Star Press Limited, grow inside the invective minds, evolving concepts, and the creative trends. The printing press you need now. Witness the beauty, diversity, and natural wonder with our works. Inside Black Star Press Limited, in association with Lionhead Group of Companies. Call us now on 0200-880-000 for all your print works. Black Star Press Limited, a worldwide reputation for quality printing. Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. And as to me on the show, I have um, the lawyer, Eduji, uh, Godwin Eduji Tamaklu, and um, of course, uh, the member of parliament, the Honorable Collins Adumako Benson. And I, I hear a lot of people uh, asking about uh, FT and what. FT is scientific abbreviation. <laughs> okay, so so frankly, templating. Yeah, so by, by the time we leave the program, I'll get the two gentlemen <laughs> uh, who, according to Abraham Ferguson, are uh, <laughs> experts uh, in uh, uh, FTs to tell us what <laughs> that is. Uh, but just hold on, keep calm, and love the number 10. It's been 10 years of grace filled magic, 10 years of transforming spaces into havens of beauty and functionality, 10 years of graceful adventures, bringing tens of thousands of dreams into reality. Walk into the showroom of graceful adventures and experience the best in swivel chairs that embrace your every turn. A conference table that is the epicenter of your team's creativity, your sleek cabinets and best work stations. And yes, a sofa that calms your body's tens of drudgeries. Visit Graceful Adventures, showroom at number two, Johnny O Street, Kiseman, uh, that's directly opposite the Kisaman Park. Or you can reach Graceful Adventures on 0501-672-776 or 0501-672-777. And you still have up to 67% discount on selected electronic appliances uh, from brands such as Samsung, LG, Moved, Nasco, TCL, Media, and Toshiba from the Makers Electronics Company Limited. Uh, just visit their showrooms at the Taifa Bukina Highway, Amasama Zongo Junction, Oyarifa Tema and Boga Junction, Kaswa New Market, Shaman Valko Flats, Kumasi Ainima Kokobi, Takradi Fie Kuma No. 9 Market, or you can call the Makers Electronics Company Limited on 055 222 or 055 the Makers Electronics Company Limited, large and in charge with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. Terms and conditions apply. And what does wealth mean to you? Do you want to live like a tycoon? Remember, who's got the mola? Who's got the power? Ghana's newest lottery game draws live on Adom TV at 9 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. daily. Now pick up your phones, tablets, and computers and download the Game Park Games app on Play Store. You can also play on their website, www.gameparkgames.com or by dialing star 946 hash on all networks. Just choose four numbers from 0 to 9. It's easy to play and easy to win. Charlie, make we play this game and make some mola. Nobody beats out in Ghana. Game Park Games, more mola, more power. This game is regulated by the National Lottery Authority and is not for persons under the age of 18. Play responsibly. And um, yes, uh, the household budget is becoming problematic. And I'm sure that everybody keeps looking out for the family size in terms of all the things that you have to buy for the family. And uh, if you're looking for 
a toothpaste that can cater for the entire family. The recommended family toothpaste is the Kel 360 toothpaste and is approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. Kel 360 toothpaste provides you and your family with all around dental protection throughout the day with freshness. Kel 360 toothpaste is good for kids, children, and adults. Let your family be a proud family when they step out by constantly using Kel 360 toothpaste. It brightens your teeth, prevents cavity with its cool mint, gives you fresh breath throughout the day, and protects the gum. For consistency and quality, use Kel 360 toothpaste. It's a product from Samara Company Limited Producers of Sasso, and it's available in all supermarkets, malls, provision shops. Call Samara Company on 246 Kel 360 toothpaste, happy smile. And Odura Odura, it's on already. The Paramount Chief and Elders of the Equipping Traditional Area, in partnership with Original TV, Original 91.9 FM and Metro TV, is inviting you to witness the rich culture and excitement at this year's Odura Festival, which started um, last Monday, the 25th of September, and will end on 2nd October 2023 with the following activities. So on Monday was a path clearing um, of the route to Asha in Ojura. Yesterday was the adoring of the new yam um, in Asha in Ojura. And today uh, will be the remembrance for the departed and a visit to the stool houses. Tomorrow, uh, no, sorry, Friday, the 29th of September, will be the grand deba of the chiefs and elders. And uh, there will be a health walk and health screening with the St. Michael Specialist Hospital on Saturday, the 30th of September at Abainim. And uh, that's right opposite to the palace. Okay. And um, original High Life with live band on Saturday evening at Abainim. And a Thanksgiving service on Sunday, the 1st of October. And of course, on Monday will be Odoe Didi. You know, uh, when I was uh, much, much younger, I think some 20 years ago, I used to go for that one. Uh, the Monday after the Jura weekend, that's what they did. So that's happening um, on, the, on Monday, the 2nd of October. So join the fun and entertainment at Superb Lounge every evening with your favorite artist, the Fia America, Wendy Shea, Bisakede, Kojun Kansa, Lewin, D Crime, Stage and many more. Original TV, Original 91.9 FM, and Metro TV are the official media partners of Jura 2023. And we promise to bring you a comprehensive coverage. Yes, uh, yes, let's wrap up on yes, the yes, yes. restrictions. Uh, Randy, I, I recall mm -hmm. when the EC brought the, uh, the new uh, ally, mm -hmm. um, and we had a committee of the whole, which was chaired by the speaker, and the committee was set up. That committee included both members from the MPP and the NDC. Mm -hmm. The report that, we brought, that was brought to the plenary suggested that. Um, we suggested to the EC to amend certain sections of the of the airline. Mm. Um, I I don't subscribe to my brother's uh, point that the EC must be conniving with uh, the majority in order to uh, pull this through. Um, the fact that two the members of the the committee were both from the two political parties that brought that particular report that indicated. A recommendation to the EC for them to amend a uh, part of the airline should tell you that the party I belong to, the majority side, did not and have not in any way connived with the Electoral Commission uh, to, as it were, favor us. In any case, Randy, if we are going to win the election next year, mm. I'm not too sure that one of the processes or the steps the party is going to take is to connive with the EC. Mm. Uh, I, I think it's important that I make that point very clear. Uh, again, uh, my brother said that it seems the EC is doing everything possible to please the president. Uh, I, I'm not too sure uh, the president is happy with seeing a lot of crowd or a lot of people queuing just to register. I'm not too sure uh, that is the case. Mm -hmm. Now, Randy, he's a lawyer. Uh, Edward, you have to assist me. How was an EC removed? How, what is the process? I'm sure it starts with a petition. If I recall, um, it starts with a petition. Mm -hmm. uh, a prima facie has to be established, mm -hmm. and you are a lawyer, you can assist me. <laughs> and then it goes through a certain process before an electoral commissioner is re removed. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this is in the Constitution. Maybe he can help me with the sections. So I'm a little bit surprised when my brother began his submission by saying that His Excellency Nana Dunkwe Kufuado removed um, the the former electoral commissioner, mm. uh, knowing very well 
that it went through a certain process. And indeed, the petition had to come from somebody. And all the president had to do was to ferry uh, that to a certain committee, because I think the, the Council of States, if you can assist me, for a prima facie to be established. A CJ. A CJ, for a prima facie to be established before even they can sit on it and have a discussion about it. So it's, 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 quite, it's quite unfortunate for my brother to say that the president on his own removed uh, the electoral commissioner. He has used quite some strong words for the, this current electoral commissioner. Mm -hmm. And Randy, I'm not surprised because this attitude of political parties, myself included, and his political party, bastardizing the electoral commission when you're in opposition, it's, not, it's nothing new. I remember during our time, or during their time, what my political party or some people said about the then electoral commissioner. In the long run, uh, she went ahead to declare this Abu Fadu the president. Uh, and so I'm not surprised. But I would just plead with him that going forward, yes, if you listen to our discussion, we all agree that some of the operational things happening now could have been done better. But I don't think using words like her, thinking it's bizarre and um, uh, she's the worst ever seen and all that, I, I will not subscribe to, the, to that language, Randy. Mm. All right. Randy, in two minutes. Yes, just uh, to wrap up. <coughs> you see, while we're having this discussion, a colleague sent me a text from Equiap himself, mm. where in some instances people come and EC officials deliberately will say, look, you, I'll get the police to arrest you and all of those things. I think that we can handle it well, mm. where we allow the political parties and their agents to help and assist in the process. You see, Randy, when I make the point, about Akufuado removing the Electoral Commission chairperson. I am fortified by the events surrounding that particular engagement. Who were the petitioners in the first place? How did the petition get to the presidency? Look, we know things that have happened. In fact, one of the lawyers for the petitioners Eventually, he was supposed to go to the Court of Appeal. And, and so, so, please, so, so, please. Wait, wait, no, wait, wait. wait. If, you see, you see, lawyers, you, oh, hold on. Eventually, has to go see, to the, the Court things, of Appeal. Look, look, uh, Collins. Mr. Akufuado has demonstrated a certain lack of self-restraint when it comes to these issues. There's a reason why, in the superior wisdom of the framers of the Constitution, they decided to give this constitutional independent bodies, security of tenor. Yes. It's only the Akufado who has done the unthinkable. How? How? The you? unthinkable. And you know it. No, I don't know <laughs> it. I don't know <laughs> you it. You say, Colin, that the same constitution wait, that you're talking wait, about wait. also stipulates how but you say an Randy, independent oh, body. Randy, Randy, there's even a bigger challenge that we are anticipating. You see, because the registration is happening in the district offices, and he would appreciate it, on the day of election, People identifying where they will be voting is also going to be a different layer. Because, you see, people move from one particular area and come to another town. Just by word of mouth, I live here, I live here. Then the electoral commission officials put those, input those data. But on the day of election itself, you need to be identified to a particular polling station. Would that not be cured with the display of the registered as th that no, they do. But you see, uh, no, already you have spent 30000 doing bringing them. Where is the display going to happen? The display, as I know, normally will happen at the police station. So you see the wisdom why yes. you need to do it there. So there's already a problem that we are anticipating on the day of election itself. The challenge that these problems will come. And, and, and that is why I say that, you see, when people are making laws, and the law is a product of consultation. It allows for different ideas, and that enriches that particular legislation. And you notice that the previous CIs, because they had broader consultation, it allows, in fact, ordinarily, the most suitable place for registration is supposed to be the police station, mm -hmm. so that the person knows that I registered in this particular police station. So On I'm the election day, I'm just walking to that police station to cast my vote, and go home. But this time around, you are traveling 97 kilometers to a place to do this. Clearly, the inconvenience is well established.
All right. So, um, Collins, let me let me pick your views on what has been happening the last uh, <laughs> forty-eight hours. And I have uh, seen a post by um, um, the Honourable uh, Chairman Tejaku. Yes, and um, I'd want to read that to 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 set the discussion rolling. It says, the unfortunate departure of Alan Chermantin from our ranks must serve a necessary and sufficient notice to us all and lead us to a time of deep introspection rather than a time for gloating or the display of triumphalist arrogance. The history of our tradition must teach us that the consequences of events such as has now befallen us since the heady days of 1951 to date have always been negative and have cast a deep and lingering shadow on our electoral fortunes. At least, my brother Chair Martin has put his thoughts and feelings on paper for all to appreciate. How about the many who have a similar and maybe more petulant sentiments in their hearts but are not openly expressing the same? There are many in our party today who have, out of dismay, resigned in their hearts and are only waiting to walk away from us at the ballot box. Now is the time to smoothen ruffled feathers and assuage wounded sentiments across the length and breadth of our party. Now is the time to examine ourselves if indeed we are true and faithful to the tenets and values of the UP tradition, or we have metamorphosed into an ugly shadow of what we should be. This must become the urgent task ahead of us. And this is Buachi Ejaku. So Alan quits. The party responds. There's been a lot of interviews. Yesterday, uh, the former chief of staff, uh, the Honorable Kujun Pieni, also granted extensive interviews. Uh, Mr. Chiamati himself has been uh, on a media blitz um, as well. Now, this is Chiamati Ejaku, who also was unhappy with the process. And he wrote indicating his disagreement and his unhappiness and then stepped aside. He didn't resign from the party, but he makes the point. He says, at least my brother Chairman Tin has put his thoughts and feelings on paper for all to appreciate. How about the many who have a similar and maybe more petulant sentiments in their hearts but are not openly expressing the same? There are many in our party today who have out of dismay resigned in their hearts and are only waiting to walk away from us at the ballot box. Now is the time to smoothing ruffled feathers and assuage wounded sentiments across the length and breadth of our party. Now is the time to examine ourselves if indeed we are true and faithful to the tenets and values of the UP tradition or we have metamorphosed into an ugly shadow of what we should be. These must become the urgent task ahead of us. Well, Randy, <clears throat> I agree with uh, uh, Mr. Wache mm. uh, that this is not a time for us to, uh, to be jubilant um, about the exit of a very stalwart of our party. And then he makes a point that um, at least Mr. Chomateng has put his thought on paper. And that there are a lot more people who will not put it on paper, but will harbor some pains in them. I'm sure once Mr. Chamartin has put his thought on paper uh, and given reasons for why he has taken this kind of decision, uh, we are at liberty now to analyze the, the thoughts that he put on paper. Uh, and of course, significantly, uh, Mr. Ch uh, Boache Jakun did not conclude by saying he's exiting from the party. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just cautioning that um, you should take a cue or learn lessons from what has happened. He says that, what, what, okay, the import of what he's saying is that in the case of the Honorable Ejaku, um, Honorable Chairman Tin, he has put his thoughts on paper yes. and it's gone. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That but he says there are many. Yes, and I'm saying that his thoughts, mm. once on paper now, we can look at them mm. and analyze them. Uh, and uh, I'm happy that Mr. Ejaku uh, uh, when he felt that some things were not going well, he also put some paper yeah. sent to the party, but did not decide to leave. Right. right. Uh, and, and that is, that is the, the departure for, from Mr. Alan Chemati. Mm -hmm. I, I met uh, personally Mr. Chemati just a month to the 
uh, the super delegate conference. And I had an interaction with him. And, and he comes across as a very well knowledgeable person, uh, very deep in his thoughts. He understands the history of our party very well. Um, he's been with this government and has served this government well, both His Excellency President Kufo and um, Nana Dankwe Kufado. Uh, and knowing him from afar and reading about him, I was a little bit surprised that he would take a decision of this nature to exit the party after almost about 40 years of long service to this particular tradition, uh, to see his name expunged from the, or taken out from the books of the party, uh, is quite worrying. And our appeal to everybody, every communicator, as Mr. Boache Jakun has said, to be circumspect in our um, uh, commentary on his decision. Uh, Randy, politics is about numbers, and my wish was that Mr. Chemante would have stayed to help cure the problem that he has identified. Unfortunately, now he's left the party, and per the party's constitution, once you resign, you forfeit your membership. So it's quite unfortunate that now I'll be discussing Mr. Chemante as somebody who's out of our party, just like I'll have a discussion with my good brother, Mr. Uh, uh, my, good, my very good brother, lawyer. Your FT partner. My, <laughs> my very good you brother. Are, you are putting yourself <laughs> into the realms of parliamentary <laughs> privilege <laughs> invitation. <laughs> you know he's an MP <laughs> and he enjoys immunity <laughs> and privileges. Not on Good Morning Ghana. <laughs> <Very well. laughs> Randy, I, I, I've been reading Mr. Chemerton's um, uh, um, press conference. As Mr. Jaco said, it's on paper. Mm -hmm. And if you look at page seven, it's a fellow countrymen and women. After carefully analyzing the results of the superdelegate conference, I issued a press statement on the 7th of September 2023, declaring my intention to exit the process leading to the presidential primaries. In the run-up to the superdelegate conference, the National Council of the Party made some of the most controversial and contentious decisions in the history of the party. They rejected a petition signed by nine out of the ten aspirants requesting for the superdelegate conference to be held in one location, as well as allowing each delegate to the conference to nominate five persons instead of one, in line with the provisions of the party's constitution. This is Mr. Alan Chematin's assertion that they sent a petition requesting that the election should be held at one particular place and that each person who is a voter or a delegate should be given an opportunity to vote for five people in line with the party's constitution. In my humble and considered opinion, the decisions of the National Council were both unmeritorious and unconstitutional. Randy, the question is whether this assertion by Mr. Chemartin is true or is unconstitutional or not. Randy, if you look at our party's constitution, chapter 13 one. The decision as to the venue and date for the superdelegate conference rests with the National Council. It does not say that it rests with the aspirant. Indeed, there's a precedent. In 2014 and 2015, we held a superdelegate conference. It was not held at a particular place. It was held on a regional basis. Fortunately, Mr. Alan Chamartin was part of that process. I'm finding it difficult to understand why this time around he thinks that it's not in line with the party's constitution. He says that he expects that one person should vote for five people. Randy, if you look at our constitution, 13 2 2, it's quite clear. There's one person, one vote. You vote, one delegate is supposed to vote for one of the aspirants, one of the candidates. And I'm saying that this is not something new. The constitution has not been amended since 2014. So I'm quite a little bit surprised as to why Mr. Chemati will say that this particular provision is unconstitutional, or what happened is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying that he will, we will be interrogating what he has put on paper to see whether his reasons for his exit, as he put it, is meritorious or not. Now he proceeds to say that there was a lot of intimidation, monetization, and 
it was the conference was strategically and tactically skewed. Randy, our constitution is very clear as to which people constitute the electoral college, the national council, patrons, national executives, members of parliament, um, constituency chairman, regional executives. So it is in the constitution. So Randy, even before I became a member of parliament in 2020, the constitution had envisaged that once I become a member, I become a delegate. How that process will be skewed is also a little bit problematic for me. And I keep saying that Randy, Mr. Chamatin knows too much than I do. And I'm sure probably he has more information that he has, than he has put on paper. Because if the reasons for his exit is just what has been put on paper, being strategically being skewed and all that, if those are the only reasons, then Randy, it's, it's a little bit difficult for me to, 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 to appreciate. You but as be, I said... You could be right, because any time you listen to his interviews, you hear new things. Yes. Yeah. So as I said, probably there are a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes that he is aware of on the basis of which he thinks that the best thing for him to do is to exit the party and mm. go as an independent candidate. But if we are to analyze what he has put here as the only basis for which he wants to exit, Randy, then uh, I, I find it a little, a, a little bit difficult. Right. But be that as me, um, I, I, for the past two, three days, Randy, I, I've not been a happy, a happy person. Mm -hmm. I, I never wished for Mr. Chamartin to have taken such a decision. Of course, this is a very, very personal decision to him. I've also read and seen key members of his team proud to the he exiting the race, uh, the members of parliament. Almost all of them. I've read uh, Mr. Carlos Ainkras' uh, post. I've seen Abena Sari, Honorable. <coughs> I've seen OPK. I've listened to Sly. I've listened to um, Katrina Foku, Afeku and all that. All of them indicating that, yes, they believe in his mission to leave this country. But one of the first reasons why they joined his campaign was because he was first of all a member of the party and let me say that randy i still believe that the mpp is a strong political party i am still very committed to the ideals and principles of envision of the, our forebearers i'm still committed to the elephant family and randy i i i will just appeal to all the others who feel aggrieved that it's better to stay in and help solve the problem than to move outside mm -hmm. and try to help correct the issues. Right. right. So, Randy, um, I pick, um, I think this whole thing about Alan going independent underscores the lack of, you know, intelligence gathering within the MPP and a demonstrable evidence of a party that is unable to pick earlier signals and how to mitigate the fallout. And so the party appears to be in great shock and the cacophony of confused response to the decision by Allen to go independent is self-evident. I've heard the Ashanti regional chairman wound to me basically go on air to mock him. I've seen other young persons in the MPP um, arguably tell him in the face that you can go to hell, nothing will happen. First of all, Randy, the entire party structure of the MPP post-2008 is one engineered by Mr. Akufado for his personal whims and caprices. And so, we saw how he orchestrated the removal of Kwabna J.J. Paul and Paul Afoko. And the reason why he did that is that if you read the African um, Watch magazine, where Mr. Paul Afoko narrates how Mr. Akufado, then opposition leader, imported Serbians, mercenaries, South African mercenaries, among other things, with the sole purpose of destabilizing this country. And so to, to, to have resisted his decision 
to take over this country through violence, among other things. Akufado was definitely not pleased and engineered their removal as national chairman and general secretary. It is that MPP that Akufado had established and built for himself and his protege, Dr. Mahmoudou Bahamia. And what is not in doubt is that Akufado believes that he can get a third term through his podo, Dr. Mahmoudou Bahamia, the yes, protege. That, that, that expression is unfair. The podo. Yes. Yes. That, that, that expression is unfair. That's unfair. Really? I'm, I'm surprised. Anytime no, 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 I no. use the word podo, no, 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 no. people say it's unfair. It's unfair. Why? It, 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 it it's unfair. It's unfair. No, no, no. I, I think you can use, look at the dictionary. You, know, you, can it's use that, that, you can use it's that. Unfair. So the protege is fine. It's so, okay, you can say protege. Okay, no, so Akufado's no. protege, Dr. Mahmoud Obamia, if, if you are not comfortable mm -hmm. with the use of Pudo. Yeah. I thought that it has obtained a notorious thing in Ghanaian no, political no, lexicon. No. The last time it was used, I was vehemently against it. Oh, okay. And okay. I still so, be, okay, yeah. okay. So on principle, yes. you, are, you, are, you are against it. That's fine. So I'll replace the Pudo with protege. Mm -hmm. But the point ought to be made clear that because Mr. Akufado wants a third term through his protege, mm. Dr. Mahmoud Obamia, he has schemed the MPP leadership structure in such a way as to achieve that only outcome. First of all, the process of having a super delegate system was a novelty through constitutional amendment in the MPP. And that whole arrangement was to provide a filtering system. Because at that time, Mr. Kufado, having done 20, uh, 2008, 2012, needed that amendment post-2013. And when the amendment came, the first time it was used was the 2014 superdelegate system. Now, something significant happened. If you recall, in that super delegates conference, after the outcome, nine MPP MPs were identified as Allen supporters in Ashanti region, and they were marked for death. And the Akufado system, what Alan Chemantin described as the unscrupulous cabal, ensured that the whole system was engineered that when the nine MPs showed their support to him, they made sure that by 2016, they were no longer MPs again. The, well, system, well, well, oh, well, well, the system went against them and ensured that they were defeated in their respective primaries. My brother Collins is a young person, first time MP. He's looking at his future. And wouldn't want to risk it. I mean, he's a young man, finance person, <laughs> smart, want to take for, uh, calculated risk. But in his heart of heart, he knows that the concerns raised by Mr. Alan Chamanchi is one that goes to the very heart of fairness and balance. Look, nine individuals are involved in an electoral process. Nine aspirants. Ten. Uh, sorry, ten. Nine out of ten wrote a petition to the National Council and said, look, the first time we use this delegate system, because a uh, super delegate system, because it was done in the various regions, it was easier for you to identify anti this, anti this. So on the basis of that, let's have the election in a centralized location. Because once it's a centralized location, it is difficult to isolate regions. It is difficult to isolate individuals. Can you imagine that at the National Council meeting, 72 people voted against the petition by nine and supported the view of one person. Only nine voted in support of the petition and the details of that. I have the... So they supported the view of one person. Which one person? Baumia. Baumia did not take a petition. No, you are not. Ah, but he wanted the establishment. Did you hear Baumia say that he oh, wanted the establishment? Ah, but do you want him? Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Calm Baumia, down. No, calm, no, calm no, down. I've never said here that no. Baumia came with a petition. But you are saying that he is the establishment. Oh, something oh, wait, and voted wait, for wait. one person. <laughs> and I'm saying that Baumia did not go there Colin, to you can't describe me. You can't. Oh. So you see, nine. 
said the established system is no good. Let's change it. At the National Council, 72 agreed with the establishment view. That is, let's do it in the various regions. This and that, just as it was done in 2014. Yes, and the fallout of the 2014 was the fact that individuals were targeted and victimized. And so with the benefit of hindsight, the nine petitioners then came and said, look, let's have this whole process done in a centralized location where everything gets messed up. So it is difficult to identify that so-so-and-so is doing candidate B or candidate C. That allows fairness and balance. So was that decision by National Council unconstitutional? No, for him, that whole decision allows for the situation that we saw in Northeast. No, but I'm not saying, all, hold I'm, I'm hold just asking a question, yes. brother. That, that decision, that, that, that is it unconstitutional? Alan holds the view that it is unconstitutional. How? He holds that view. How? And he's entitled to it. The point of But, but the, the view was subjected to a vote. And, 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 and an overwhelming majority. 72 yeah, voted against yes. their petition. Yes. Yes. But Edward, that Edward, is what I'm saying. That Edward, but is that not due process? Edward, Edward, with your, with your if you call it Let so. me read, read 13 one with your kind permission. Randy, the election of the party's presidential candidate shall be held not later than 24 months from the date of the national election. The date and venue, and this is very important, the date and venue for the election shall be decided by the National Council. Randy. Yes. The so, yes but, the, but the decision of the National Council can also be questioned. So, so, it's, so, it's, so, but Randy, it's unconstitutional. It's okay. No, I'm saying that whichever decision the National Council takes must also be in accordance with the dictates of the and that's the law. So, I'm, no, I'm just saying yes. the law says that the it is their, decision, is their decision to make. Okay. But if somebody believes that that in making that decision, they have offended parts of the constitution. I'm not saying that's the case. Uh -huh. The point I'm just making is that even in taking this decision, they could take a decision which also offends the constitution. But I'm saying that there's no way so, so, so Randy, that was offended. Randy, let okay. me just... Okay. Right. Randy, let me just uh, right. So, you see, so the system had been done in such a way as to achieve a particular outcome. Mm. And that outcome is to ensure the coronation of Dr. Baumia. And I've listened to the uh, majority leader chairman Sabons even proposed that if they go into the contest and Bahamia get 75 percent, there shouldn't be the need for the the actual November 4th election. They should that's just go and 70 endorse. Percent. That's a special. It's 70 percent. And through the outcome, you notice that whereas Akupado could get 81 percent in 2014, Bahamia did about 60, 68, 67. Meaning that there is overwhelming 32 percent of the primus interparents of the MPP who do not see the viability of Bahamian's candidature to lead even the MPP, let alone Ghana. And so that record ought to be put there. But you see, my brother made the point that okay, oh, individuals who were part of Allen's campaign have abandoned him. That should not be so surprising. If, for instance, the Honourable Abna decides to abandon Allen. Because per the APP constitution, if she joins Allen, automatically she forfeits her membership. What would then be her locus to remain as deputy minister? So obviously you'd want to protect your, 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 your source of power, which is appointment, than to jump ship. If you look at my good brother, OPK, a young man, parliamentary uh, MPP, if he joins Allen now, he ceases to be an MPP member. How can he continue to be MP on the ticket of MPP for his constituency? So, quite clearly, you should understand why. Mr. Uh, my, my, my friend, Honorable Sly, Afeku and Ku. Afeku is co contesting the game for uh, uh, Evaluate Jira. The contest there is huge. I, I was there about three weeks ago. And it's no joke. She's going through a lot. Even her support for Allen alone, the Bamiya people have weaponized that whole thing against her in the constituency. So I'm not surprised at all that all these individuals are running away because each one of them needs to survive. And like we always say, the first rule of nature, the, 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 the first rule of nature is self-preservation. And they are entitled to preserve themselves. Weaponized. <laughs> yes. Look, you... Even Sly, English Ibotiano, the hell he is going through, even by openly declaring support 
for Mr. Alan Kwejo Chamante. But you see, if you read Alan's statement, it makes something interesting. He says, first of all, this is not the MPP. This is not the MPP that they formed in 1992. And that is consistent with the call that we have made that the current crop of MPP persons under the leadership of Mr. Akufuado mm. is one that today has normalized violence. Look at what happened to Alice's uh, uh, um, uh, agent in Northeast, which happens to be the home region of the vice president. Totally condemnable. Totally condemnable. How a party set up rules that when you vote, it should remain secret. But the regional youth organizer for Northeast deliberately decided that he will show his vote to other uh, 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 persons who are yet the, the other delegates. And it was done for a purpose to whip everybody in line so that those who do not go or show their vote, they'll be victimized. And that is exactly the reason why the nine other aspirants petition because if it was a central location showing your vote will not make any meaning but once you localize the conversation you can easily identify people for the purposes of victimization how is this difficult to understand how is it difficult and so if you look at how the entire mpp system is structured and i'm so disappointed in no other person by mr steven in team i expected so much that with the benefit of experience and old age, we will ensure that the right thing is done in the MPP. I recall how you, Stephen, in team, how President then candidate Akufuado frustrated you from becoming national chairman of MPP. What has gone wrong? The, the, the evidence is there. What in fact, to wrong? the point that Akufuado actually preferred the CPP man, what's the name? Wesemao uh, <laughs> Blay. Wesemao <laughs> Blay. To even become national chairman ahead of you. He won us the 2016 elections. And consistently, you can see that kind of politics. Have we been seeing the Ejapadia document? Randy, have you read that document? No. Okay, I'll get you a, a, a copy. <laughs> and if you read that Ejapadia <laughs> document. The head of legal wants to put everybody in trouble. <laughs> you have not read any document. Don't oh, okay. <laughs> I will share a copy with you. And if you read that <laughs> Ejapadie document, yes. you will see that serially, the takeover of the financial system, the cost structure, independent constitutional body, all of these things are playing out as dictated in that Ejapadie, even the takeover of the MPP. And that is why, if you listen to Chief Alan Kujio Chamantin, he makes the point that, look, the MPP can offer something better than what the party had become under the leadership of Akufado. If you read the statement issued by uh, Boachi Ejako, he makes the point even more clearer that is the MPP aware the number of persons who are quiet but sitting with anger and pain. The time when Alan Kujio Chomante and Co started a young executive forum. Many of the people who are taking the decision today against him have not even obtained MPP membership card. Unless money, toil, everything that he had put in the MPP, the record is there. And so the man is simply saying that I deserve fair treatment. If you do this to me in NDC, I will be happy. Ordinarily, ordinarily, I should not even be talking about this matter because it's MPP, they are matter. If they will beat themselves and do what? Provided the violence does not go onto the street. Ordinarily, I should just what? But some of these things undermine Ghana's own democratic credentials. The use of violence, weaponization of money. I listen to Kedeje Paul. I listened to my, <laughs> my good brother, uh, Hobson Adoye, where Hobson talks about how money was shared at the super delegates and the kind of money he mentioned. In fact, to the point that Hobson even said, do we know where our IMF, uh, IMF money was? And I got scared. Granny, <laughs> I got scared. 
<laughs> he got scared because Hopsi was asking where I have a The IMF money. <laughs> Randy, because you know how we struggle to get this IMF money. The, 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 oh. pain, the, pain, the, pain, the pain Ghanaians are going through to get this IMF money. So ordinarily, we should be worried if we don't know the point amount of the money. Randy. Yes. And, and for me, those are the critical issues that we need to do. Mr. Alan Tremantin had made some quite lofty, some fanciful propositions. Uh, he says the alternative uh, I've always maintained. The last uh, speech Dr. Bahamia delivered in Cape Coast, your delegates conference, when he was mentioning the members of the economic mismanagement team, he mentioned Alan Kweju Chairman Ten, mm. or Safo Mafo, mm. Bwachi and Jaako. Mm. For me, I've always described all of them as the fruit of the poisonous tree. Mm. They are the reason why Ghana's economy is where it is. Alan does not provide any alternative mm. beyond what the MPP as a whole mm. has delivered so far. Mm. So definitely, he does not. Represent the alternative government. Okay. All right. Uh, Randy, just a few comments. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about Nana Gufar trying to destabilize the country. Oh, it, it, then you no, read no. the African Watch yes. report. Nana Gufar, uh, then, now, and forever, will not have any intention of destabilizing this country. Are you sure? Yes. And then you said. Nana no, it's, it's, it's in, in the African. You said Nana Gufar was a care term. Yeah, true, Bam. Yeah. So when President Kufor mm -hmm. was seen to be support Allah. Was, oh, was he was saying, I didn't know much about you know, your you internal know, arrangement. You want to tell I didn't before, know much about your... Tell you. I didn't know that much. That, that issue was also raised. Yes, but you see... The it was raised. It yes. was raised that uh, Alan Chirantin would be a continuation of Kufo. Okay, so, so, yeah, okay, so, so Kufo also wanted to tell him. Now he says we didn't pick up intelligence. Ah, didn't Nana Kune do? Leave your party to form another party. No, but we knew ahead. Oh, we knew what I heard. That I'm well, knew what I heard. About. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I mean, pick, we saw her. You couldn't pick intelligence the to stop it. We saw her registering her party. The founder of your party. The registration yeah. process wife. cannot be secret. Yeah. The founder of your party, yes. his wife, mm -hmm. moved away from the NDC, from the party that his, his, his husband had formed to form another political party against his husband's party. Mm -hmm. Did you pick any intelligence? Oh, we picked. Which intelligence did you pick? We did. If you did, you <laughs> have stopped it. Oh, no. <laughs> We wanted a free flowing <laughs> movement. Then allow us also to have a free flowing movement. Okay. That's what is happening. <laughs> All right. So, so, but so, Randy, so, is yes. it not curious <laughs> that when this issue, you know, came, I saw my MPP colleagues try to provide explanation, and they've been explaining since. But curiously, they say, oh, but in the year 2000, when the NDC had basically done eight years, Gusitando left. What they don't tell their supporters is that when Gucci left, NDC lost. <laughs> How come that you don't add that one to it? <laughs> and that was the eight years. Okay. Just as you are in your going into your eight. So history has a way of beautifully repeating itself. And mm -hmm. you, you are quite smart. I know you are preparing your handing over notes together with your MPP. No, mm -hmm. I'm not a mem I'm not a member. No, 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 I'm but you can't hand over notes. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 <coughs> I have um, an interesting text from uh, CSC. It says, Tal Collins, his submission is going to determine his status in Alan's cabinet in 2025. Fantastic. <laughs> the MPs weren't involved in the organization of his movement. They are leaving his no border to the movement. They will be considered first when Alan wins. They will be considered as ministers first okay, okay, when he wins. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, the, 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 the Honorable uh, Hassan Yariga, the leader of the APC. Okay. Interesting, he left the PNC, right? Yes. Okay. But he says Alan's excuse of being treated unfairly for me is no excuse because it's going to be the same at the national elections with other political parties. It's not every time that the majority decision is right. I think he should have stayed. 1,000 delegates against 206,000, the dynamics can change. It wasn't an excellent idea uh, to step out. The MPP is not a monarchy, so he should have campaigned very hard and well to win. MP members believe in their platform and, will follow, and wouldn't follow him as independent. So at the moment, there's no guarantee of anyone winning the MPP Congress come 4th November. It's an open contest. says you can lose elections at your own constituency and win the election at national level. Uh, for me, the Super Delegates Congress can't determine the winner of the 4th November Congress. He should have reconsidered his decision. He can't win as an independent candidate. He says, 
Alan going independent will cause a lot of damage to his followers, to the political careers of his followers, including his immediate um, family. These are the views of the Honorable Hassan uh, Ayariga, okay, uh, uh, as well. Okay. Uh, so we have the men, we have the men. And if one of the big men has decided to abandon the ride at the back of the elephant and fly with the butterfly, so be it. We wish him well. All the injuries inflicted on him by the elephant will soon be healed. But anyway, which way Mahama will come? That's grace from Ashali Botri. Okay, so um, I guess that uh, we have to leave it here. But. Uh, well, Randy, uh, Randy, yes. if you permit me, um, you know um, the Kolebu City Hospital? Yes. The Rena Department had put out a notice. Yes. That going forward, the cost of dialysis. Yes. Has uh, moved from 300 Ghana it's cities to 720 something mm. Ghana cities. Mm. Randy, I have done a few behind the scenes conversation, and it appears that the regents that they use in the process, the tax component, they usually enjoy tax exemption. Mm -hmm. The tax exemptions have been taken off, mm. and that is one of the reasons why the prices have gone up. But we are still Two. taxing uh, uh, sanitary, uh, sanitary, sanitary parts, parts. and, uh, and, and, and uh, good uh, Sosu, Sosu yes. has intervened. Yes. I mean, if you want to punish a woman for the only crime being but must it take the, that? Man, the monthly thing, yeah. clearly, clearly. I have, it, a video of, of uh, I have a video of the vice president. Yes, he said on take taxes on sanitary parts. Mm. Proud to the 2020, 2020 election. election. I think that was even in Cape Coast or one of the places yeah. where he said, the people of Central Region, are you ready? We are going to build for you airport. I understand the airport had been built, but that's a conversation for another day. But Randy, just to plead. Airport? Yes, in the Central Region. Airport for, for ants or for I don't butterflies? Know. Okay. That's a matter for... But I want to plead with uh, duty bearers, particularly the finance minister, that the tax exemptions that have been taken off mm -hmm. should immediately be restored. You know the impact of this? A few, uh, just a few months ago. I mean, this is like death sentence. A you, few you, months you, ago, yes. we were here um, Eric. celebrating the first guy yes. group and uh, Mr. Eric Kutoche because they pay for, I think, uh, about two thirds. The transplants. Of, apart from the transplants, mm. the um, the, insulin, dialysis the dialysis oh. treatment. Yes, 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 yes. yes About yes. two thirds of those on dialysis, if you take the data, it pays for. Them. Yes, it pays for them. Yes, and so by this decision, what it means is that increases cost. Their cost has doubled. Exactly what it is, because it's if it's about three hundred to so seven hundred. So if they want to still keep um, doing it for the same number of persons. Mm then it means that their cost is good. They have two options. Either that their cost will double, or they would have to reduce the number of people who they pay for. for I mean, for those who and, 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 and ask and, yourself, hmm. if a session costs over 700 cities, hmm. how many people, if you need, let's say, three sessions in a week, yeah. and so 12 sessions in a month, and a session costs over 700 cities, what it means is that for a month, you need close to 8,500 cities or 9,000 cities just, just, not. just for dialysis. How many persons will be able to deal with this? And, what and, can and the NHIA do about it? Can they come in? I, 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 I don't think it's, they can absorb I don't think it's an it issue of their. national health insurance. The problem, one, the depreciation of the city. Mm. Because most of the regions okay. are brought in. Mm. And they are saying that because the city has heavily depreciated, it is impacting on the cost. Two, they were enjoying tax, um, um, uh, tax exemptions on some of the things that they were bringing here. And that exemption has also been taken. And I've been following the PRO of um, Kolebu Teaching Hospital. And he makes this important intervention. And they believe that if these things are done, because if you listen to the PRO, he said if they don't do it, the entire facility will shut down. And so in order to keep the facility going, they need to increase the prices. And this is something that policy or duty bearers can easily intervene. 
to save the lives of the many Ghanaians who use those services. Because when I saw it, it was complete for me death sentence. I mean, if, if, we, if we talk about the NHIS, it will not do something about the taxes. I mean, the issue of the exchange rate perhaps is a medium to long term short. But for example, if one person on the dialysis per the current rate is going to cost between eight five and nine thousand cities a month. And you even have uh, two hundred thousand or five hundred thousand persons on dialysis. I mean you can imagine that that's virtually going to um, take away everything from the NHS. That's, 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 that's and, 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 and Randy, yes. this is exactly what he said. We no longer have a covering from government mm. and we import everything and pay for it ourselves. When, when he says a covering, what, what does it mean? Maybe I'm sure we should interrogate the, yeah. the, the, mm -hmm. He said the, the tax issue. exemption we benefited from to make these services available have also been removed by the government. Yes. And so from all indications, the role of government in the problem that we are having is huge. Okay. I, I mean, so, sometimes some of these things, they are no-brainers. Yeah. You can't, you are not in a position to offer it as part of your NHI. The least you can do is to also, if, if you are not competent enough to manage the exchange rate, at least you can be competent enough to take off the taxes. Well, uh, thanks, and, thanks and, for being and, and, and Randy, as you know, like Baumia said, it. I'll look at when it. in doubt, ob observe the... I'll, I'll, I'll look at it. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take a, an interest. Anyway. So, gentlemen, we need to go, but by kind courtesy of all those who are asking <laughs> about the FT, FT, and FT, and FT, they've asked me to play a video for both of you. <laughs> so, this is your gift for the morning. Uh, from, uh, from, uh, from the I'm FT sure, I'm yes. sure, I'm sure, I'm sure <laughs> this is coming, this production is not coming from my league. Yeah. I forget. Hello, Honorable. How are you? Sadi, I no longer want this relationship. Hey! Honorable, is this the tribunal's judgment? Yes, Zadi. I and my boyfriend had a long and deep conversation last night. I want to stay faithful. And we are planning on getting married. So, it is over between us, Zadi. Honorable, you cannot nullify my election. There will be anarchy and chaos. Sadi, why are you threatening me? Is it by force? It's not as if you love me 100 percent. Highest you love me, maybe 75 percent. My boyfriend loves me 100 percent. He's the one I want to be with. He won my heart 100 percent. Honorable, now listen to me. My not securing 25 percent of votes in a particular war in your constituency during the last election is insufficient to overturn my victory. <laughs> Considering all I have. Sadi, I said I don't want you. You can't be making life for me harder than it already is. I want to get married, grow, have my own kids and a family of my own. Not when it is my turn, Emilokon. <laughs> Listen, Honorable, you will allow me to finish my tenure before activating this dream of yours. Besides, my fellow contestants do not have the financial wherewithal to take care of the constituents. Daddy, I know he is broke. He promised he will get a job soon. He said he wouldn't even mind borrowing money to feed me and fund our wedding. Things might get better for him tomorrow, even though at the moment he is poor. Let's Let the poor breathe. Do not suffocate them. It is our responsibility to alleviate the lives of constituents. Honorable, your votes belong to me until I say otherwise. Sadie, are you for real? Are you threatening me? Power to the people. So, on behalf of your constituents, <laughs> this is for you. Thank you very much for joining me. Up next, Metro Sports.